Shalom Aleichem, to all the Choshiva Oyachim, Mishtatfim, in the 6th European Moshiach Congress. Hoistrin Vamalchus, I want to ask Rabbi Chaib Shmuel Menachem Mendel Liberov to say the, Rebbe, the Rebbe's capital, and I'd ask you all to stand.
Further ado, I want to call upon the first speaker this evening, Rav Shlema Zalman Lando, who is the Mashpia or in Bnei Brak and the Yeshiva in Bnei Brak, Teimchatmim in Bnei Brak, and I hope that you will all pay good attention to his Divrei Brocha of Chizuk to the Mishtatfim in the Sixth European Mashiach Congress, Rav Lando, the son of the Chief Rabbi of Bnei Brak. Thank you. 
kommen ins Spital, eben dann tellen Maske alle Doktoren. Nein, mir hat er ins Spital, eben dann tellen Maske das. Ich sage, schön, hat ich gebrüllt. Okay, bis jeder, nehmen wir du darfst, dann biege ich hier weg. Und er sagt, er redet mit der Chsidische Aktion, es ist geführt alle Sachen. Ich gewinne einmal ein Gläser Virus, der Wolfson, der ist einer der Kohle. Die Wolfson hat ihm gesagt, komm, arbeiten bei mir. Ich habe dir gegeben, was ich sage, Geld und Mille, wir sind ein paar Nosse, alle Jahre nicht. Ich sagte, ich will arbeiten bei Reben, aber viel weniger von uns. Und von dem Wolfson ist er nicht voll geworden, gesehen, was ich sehe, sie sind, was ich mir gerne der Ebe stelle, und der Mäse ist von Reben, Pudel ist von Reben. Und später hat von dem, was er gegeben hat, da, 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 haben wir uns dann mit Madame, mit Gott und die Sachen, und wir kennen da reingehen dort, und haben wir Adire dort. Und wir wollen uns dann direkt an Adire. Ich suche, ich wollte kommen, bringen eine Matze. Es stehen zwei Soldaten in Dresden. Man lässt sich keinem nicht da rein. Ich suche, er kommt da rein und macht das eh. Der, der, der Soldat sagt, du kannst da reingehen. Der Sohn sagt, ich habe ihm gefragt, ob er das Soldat erkennt. Er sagt, was verstehst du nicht? Also ich mache immer sehr, dass jemand nicht mehr da ist, ein Mensch, was die Mama ist, mit der Jemme, die Jemme, wird der Schemme sich fragen, am zweiten, Wäre der Mensch, der sagt, du kennst ihn nicht. Im Mälder hat er mir eingelassen. Der Ehe von Teino geht auf Schad, Herren, als er als Schuss, Zorn vor dem Mäses vor Rebbe. Und die Gerüllung brot ist zu jedem einem, ist toll wie in dem. Der Rebbe sagt in der Igres, er hat mit so was Arbeit in der Yeshiva, mit Zollt ihm nicht. Er sagt, der Rebbe, dir darf man zollen, du darfst zollen auf dem, wo du hast das Schuss, Arbeit in der Mäses vor Rebbe. Mehr, was du tust vor die Yeshiva, die Yeshiva tut vor dir. Die Männer darf ein Herr dieselbe Sache. Und wir kochen sie mit dem Mini von Moschiach. Und wir hatten nicht bekleidet, was wir Agapon nicht mehr zu sich auf Echen kommen. Wir sagten, Herr Hossit, und die Teiche, die Wörter von Dan und Afidisch. Wir sagten, wir nehmen sie ja Hefse. Wir sagten, aber meine Zorro versteht Afidisch, muss ich reden mit seiner Sprache. Die Männer darf reden mit sich, Herr Herr, aber nicht Herr. Ich sage, Agapon, ich habe mit Tutfer und Ignonien von Geula, Amitis, Beschlemmung, dass ich Tachlis der Schlemmung von der ganzen Welt. Ich sage, es ist eine, 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 es und der Rebbe schreibt klare Wörter, und das redet man mit Bett, den Minen, als der Rebbe so nicht geil wird. Es ist eben wie sein Namol, kleine Kinder, man spielt sich herum, aber der Rebbe spielt so nicht. Das darf nicht bei vielen bewohnen. Der Rebbe meint eine ernste Sache, das ist seine Schau, wenn man sich in Heder tracht, was tut man, als die Gehule soll kommen, zu sein Eitcho, Hawaii, Gehonaftobi. Und das ist sein Innen, Pnei, mein ganzes Leben. Und das ist der erste Maimer. Und Amy wird verstanden, und mit gleich gesungen, ich hier nehme noch einen ersten Meimer. Nur, ich darf sein, er ist bekehlt, nimmt noch 40 Jahre. Und andere, noch nicht alle 40 Jahre, verstehen noch alles nicht. Aber mit darf der Herr in der Mini in der Pnimi ist, hat er herzlich, herzlich, eine ernste Sache. Er erinnert uns in der Gier, jeder erinnert uns, seine jüdische Benefisch. Und dann, durch sein Messieres Nefisch, wird er bringen die Gul. Was mich schaut, mich seht heim, in Jone Banosse, der Moschee. Es redet auf seine eigene Sache. Die Schiffe hat nicht was zu zahlen mit dem Neber. Nur wo damit tun. Aber ich sage, der Rosh Hashim, der Herr sagt, mein, was du darfst zahlen, ich rüge es jetzt zahlen, ich sage, es ist mein Maskorat, los, ob ich schon allein mit Zahlen sein, mein Maskorat. Ich bin gewöhnt in Zfas, es ist immer zu sagen mir, ich meine nicht, wenn jemand nicht gewöhnt, ich habe eine Spitze, ich habe eine Nennung. Wo ist der Arbeit in der Schiffe? Der geht da weg von der Schiffe, der geht da weg, jetzt doch ich habe gehen. אף פעם, דוס גבי לאג בו אמר, אף פעם יאת האיגרס יוטס יר. מה שמפתי מי סלע זה וסי ישיבה, הרי אמרו חז"ל לפום צער האגרי. איך הוא גירט ועשמיות גירט נחתם, ונרזוק דירה דוס אל ההוי ולניברו, ונאדרה בדשברי קייטן דף ודור גן ודור דם וזין בעין ארוך. ונדוס איתקי לפן מזטוס בחוש אז אמרו אל אמי צרדה, כזה יבא הכלי נקין, דתתה גיב מרסן, תתה הלף מיר, לרם מתמיר It says that the Rebbe is the best word of the Indian from the Lord. The Indian from the Lord is the best word of the Lord. Not that the Rebbe is the best word of the Lord. If you have all of the Lord, every one of the Lord is the best word of the Lord. Then every one of the Lord is the best word of the Lord. It's a man that is the best word of the Lord. Not that you have to say that you have to do the work of the Lord. You are the best word of the Lord. 
זייד הוא החלק פונדה מייסד, פונדה מייסד, פונדה מייסד. דרי בזאת מהר אוף הלפן. דאס ויסן ביסא שליח פונדה פונדה פרידי קרם פונדה רבי שמו סיידן. אבדמי נפו מייסד זין תמיכה תמימי. אמינם את הארץ תזרח מגי טרוף, הכר, בעברית קוראים לזה לעלות רמה. ורנא פסא אלתר אמן, שליש תקין בוסביל נמן. זי העץ מדוע לין דאס פינדה אחראי אסף דיין קור. ורסט אננדר מנש, דו טוס ועל דוסי זה אי נבוס ונגיע עצו דיר ונצו די נשומר, טוס דו פסא תה ואימצן. משעס מגי טרוף הכר ומפשטי תלמיד מנישקין אוהבת פרוטין המייסד. נו דוס שתי תו דין קור. או יום הדוס עסקה של זו דרי במון תדית קופה. אז ידר אין רפיל דה אחי אספה. נשתוק עם גלתי דה מייסד, גא ערום ומאח גלת פרוט דה מייסד. ודווקא דור דם ודסגה לבן בדיר יחיד אשר בנפש. אז זה בגרת, אז השליח עוד יזרוק, אז רב עוד יזרוק, אז שליח הראש ידף עליהם טונים דגרת דמיונים. ענית ונסגר לגבי עבר בהם יחיד. אלא דף גנא הין, גנא הר, דו יר, דו נית, אביס לאום ביזינס, ונמול הום הצלוחר, ונמול הום מסירס נפש, ובדאינן דף זין שתי נף זין קוב. ונסח מול, ונכבר בירשן וראש השיבי של צופרית, ברוך השם, יחד פמרוי סביס. כי גר חפון קופ פון רבי זאת ניש ויסן. דה אי סבירון לא חליף על מנשן. דה דפנוח אמור גידי כן וטוס תשליך את דוב שנגיע הצעה עצמוס אין סוף. ואוס בבסוק כיף צעוק דה מנשן דו. דף זין אחדוס, דף זין דה בשמחה בטוב לבו. או בדף ויסן היא פנימי סבובות ובלנקס. ממילא כן סלפן. או בנית, או בנית נדם פר כיף דבר נדם נדם. אופ כיף וחס ושאול עמי מצדיו דגי דקן על המול וזין שלוחים פונם רב מלך המשיח ודוס זה המשוח איפון עצמו סי סוף יזנגע ידר פעול לבוס ויתות וידר כלי נפול מוזי שטקטון על למול זיוון הזוהר בעל תשובה עד איזה הרוב רבי ישראל אלטוי זיוון הר גבעון הבעל תשובה יותר כזה לדהרת ואוסטי רייז ומביזי איצטר ניש גבוס, אוטר גישטיינן, עם בוסי דו אסך מנשן, תחנה מרכזית, עם אוטובוסים, דף זוג אמת שזה דו אייבשטר, ואוס דו צרדו. משפט אדרי בגשרים, אין הדרך במסירות נפש רוי אשס, אלא בפעולות אפורות זעירות יום יומיות. כלי נפולס, נישקין, מר איש פעולס, ידר טוב. דפשט איז, אז אם מוזיש קרן אבל תנאין טוב. ידר כלי נפולה מטבעי עם פושקי, מי דעני מתעכבונה, יחי עדינינו מתעכבונה פנימית, קר תוות. ומילא, דוסי דרעין איפה רחמונה לי בבואי, אז דרעין אין אמיתי וסמיתות, אמיתות מתענמס, דוסי דרעין אין מוסקן קרן אבל. ודאמס איז מיינט, הדרעין אין איז מיר ניגר. ואני מדרעין איז ניגר כמן, בן המול עם ליבה, כדוע האי גרמן, איז טבי ונטורה. זה המשיחי, זאת אומרת... נצטרף את המימות נעמלי שבס נחמי כבי אפנון טנץ נחי עד עינינו מיתנה גס ירקו כפה לזית נזאת עם הדוקוק סידי ואיפן המסכבן דרינן נזנגיה איז גט מנורס פנוק בו לזול נעל מסנאי דמזן אז טרפו זה פצווי חסידי מאיפנון טנץ נחי עד עינינו ואיפן שיש פול דוס קרט עבד נשווה נגרפו נאנדר הזכן הכלי נפול אובו מתענמס לאידוך המות הכי גרייס הזכן נכד אדרה מתות הסך כלי נפולס ושפט ההום מסכו סטון גרייס הזכנו נכד ועל מעט מעט הגרשנו ומיטוט יזרעי בשטר וחורב מזכה טון איכת גרייס הזכנו שבמילא גרייך איכת שירד מגרייס הדרושס נועה מייסו איכר מגרייס שבס האיסורוס לא נניון נגיעו לה בפרט דבר מלכוס אז מאיזה טעם יד הרנס פנו ממית אפילו מתאפות סתם היונס ומתמייסדס על הזכנו איפה הגרייס דה מיקרופון דבר מלכוס ודרי בזוג דבר מלכוס ומדם לסן שבס, אז חבוס יו תסקיס לפי חג החגים, נדנו ואל למול, אותו סיפור פנים מסונה לחגים, נועל לחגים מזמת נטייר, ויו תסקיס לפי מושיח. אותו סיפור תכליס ונעל להכר ונעל לחגים, ואותו סיפור ברנק לימי סן מושיח דגילו יפו פנים מסונה לטייר, יסתכלו בתורו ונבוא נבוא סוגה, ביסר ברנק לימי סן מושיח, איזה חג החגים יו תסקיס. דו אמור אסך ורטר בוס ויסי דיסדי קניוני ועוד הרבה עוד מגלג ונדבר מלכוס זה הפושט לרננדוס ואת לרננדוס מפשטיין הוא מלפט עם בוס ענאי עצקוף ענאי גילוי ועוד הרבה עוד מגלג ממילא קריקט ונאי הכיכס דרי בשטר וטלפון ונהלפט עד עניוני בר נסגלה ונדר קונגרס זיכר די אמונה מדי חייס ותדר אינה נמדו בגלייטם משך פנצייט וביזרקום צמודי אנדרי קונגרס 
ממילא טרפטר זה מנשון, או דמי זיכה ליין, ואתה אלה מלאו מעידוד, וחייס אין דמינן, ודיני את קופה, אז אם תראה באותו גב דין אסטיאס, איך את כן עוד איש גבוס ועושה את זין, ולפן מאוד גזען, תראה באותו איס גפיר, תראה באופיר אותו איס וייטר, ומושיח ונסגל לבו, ונשם נסגל לגיבור. מדף מדרב זאת אפן אנד אייגן וזן בפעיל ממש, עשידו גילוי מים דמיונים פול משיח, למיילו מטעם הדס, דרבה פיר דיבד מיט איגרס קיידס, ומופסים מניוני בריאוס, עניונים וסקיינות נשכחו עליהם, תתקן זין עזה מניניה. הזדוני גילוי שבאין ארוך. אז אין מצווי לב מן המול, איזה מול איזה מולק, היין תיתו נאי עניונים. והנאיד ותפן אנד אייגן זה תר ודרבה פיר דיבד, לפי למטה מעשרות פוכים. ומילא ודרי בשתהלף מהדרין הזו נסגר לבאון ופה למטה מסורות פוכים אז נשנס גאולה ולאוזן תקף ודיגאול דיגאולה אמיתיס ושלימו טרפוס דרבן בעין נבוסו למטה מסורות פוכים וכי עדינינו מרינו ורבינו מלך המשיח לאילו מבוי for your warm words as we are in the midst of the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach's Sheva Brachas and Rav Lando is upon him Chadoshes this year to the Congress Moshiach without further ado I want to call upon Rabbi Ruben Matasov Shliach and Paris, who we had tremendous chizuk from hearing him over Shabbos. Fortunately, certain people who are here, especially from Golders Green, were in Zoycha to hear him on Shabbos, so hopefully he will continue be mamshech in his divrei chizuk abrocha to the Congress Mashiach European. Rav Matasov. <laughs> The day of Yudas Kislev is also the beginning of the learning the Hayim Yem. Svadus ve kabolos achlotes teves ve kviis itim loteo haniglos ve dach ve divri alikim chayim bo rabim ve chizuk dake achzidim be'avas rei A day of abrainance and be mekabo good decisions in learning teira kviis itim for learning teira haniglos and also דברי אלוקים חיים, חסידס, בורבים, דווקא עם שיעורים. You should learn that not only by yourself, but בורבים. 
It's one of the things in today's Hayyim Yayim. Everyone knows that the Rambam starts his Sefer, you say that he say this by Amuda Chochmes, which is the Rosh Tevis of Yud Kei Vav Kei. And the Hayyim Yayim also starts with the Rosh Tevis of Yud Kei Vav Kei. Yem Hisvadus Yudke, the Kabolos Achlotes Bovke. But besides this remez, we should have to make good decisions in Kvisitim, the Taylor. Taylor Haniglas, which is the Halukas Ashas, we note that in Tavshinun Beis, among the many Dvar Malchus that came out, from every Shabbos Sikha, there was also special contrasim that came out for that occasion. And in Tavshinun Beis, in Sefer HaSikha's Tavshinun Beis, you have a very long Sikha from all the years of the, which is Melukat, from all the years of the Rabbis Nesiyas about Chalukas Hashaz Beyutas Kislev and the importance of taking up on himself. Everyone should take one Mesichta and being Mishtatev in the Chalukah Sashas, learning Boshet HaMesechta Gemora, the Pashtas, and learn Chesidus, especially this year, which everyone knows, the Hamshach Samach Vov of the Rebbe Rashab, which is, to, this year we're celebrating 100 years from Tofesh Samach Vov, and we know that Tofesh Samech Vav is the Bichlal, the Rashab is, we say it is the Rambam of Teir Sachsidus, and especially the Hemshech of Samech Vav, with all our riches from the Rebbe about the Hemshech. Bichlal learning Chesidus, learning the Rebbe's Maimorim, and for sure learning in Yoni Gulu Moshiach, which this is the main myth, the main campaign of Mashiach is Pashat learning in Yone Gulu Mashiach. And learning in Yone Gulu Mashiach, Zain Mikal Yetzi Midi Pshuti, which means Pashat to learn it. Limud. Limud in Yone Gulu Mashiach. Lichia is in Yone Mashiach, the Rabbi says, how do you live in Yone Mashiach? Through the learning. Alidei Halimud be in Yone Gulu Mashiach. So we have to learn in Yone Gulu Mashiach. And we learn the Sikha of Yutas Kislev, the Dva Malchus of Yutas Kislev, in Sefer HaSikha Stav Shinun Beis, you see that the Rebbe says that the real Padah B'Shalem Nafshi is like the Mithil Rebbe is explaining in Shari Tshuva, that the real union of Padah B'Shalem Nafshi, the Shleimus union of Padah B'Shalem Nafshi, will be by the Melech HaMashiach. He is explaining three diaries: the Pada B'Shalom Nafshi of David Hamelech, the Pada B'Shalom Nafshi of Shleimi Hamelech, but the real Pada B'Shalom Nafshi will be Begulo Hamitis Vashleimo, and that will be revealed by the Melech Hamashiach. And the Rebbe is saying in this sicha, which there is a video of the sicha, that the Rebbe is saying Chav Kislev, Vitesh Chav Kislev Tov Shinun Beis. In the Yemei Samoshiach, in Welchem Mirgefinen Zichitzter, in the Yemei Samoshiach, that we are in, in the Yemei Samoshiach. We find ourselves into the Yemei Samoshiach. The Sikha is also Muge by the Rebbe. So we have to learn the Sikhas, and we have to accomplish and to, to make by us, everyone should live like he is supposed to live in Yemei Samoshiach. And this is the Chizuk Dake Achsidim Be'av Asreim. We all know what the Rambam is Messiah, that Be'ise Hazman, Le'iyesham, Le'kino, Ve'tachros, Le'muchama, Ve'lerov, Ve'chulu, Ve'chulu. So everyone should start living the real way of Av Asreim, the way we're supposed to live, the way Chizidim is supposed to live. And like everyone, uh, like Rabbi Lando spoke before, and I'm sure everyone will em emphasize this Nekuda that all the union of Yutas Kislev is the union of Ascholas Hagiyula, 
of the beginning of the Nitzutz, from the Baal Shem Tov started the union of Moshiach, Nitzutz Eshom Moshiach, the Eir of Moshiach came down to the world, but from the Geula of the Alter Rebbe, through the Geula of all the Rebbeim, until the, the Geula of the Reshchedesh of the month, which we are now, Reshchedesh Kislev, the Geula of the Rebbe, we leave Geula. And Geula means, Pasha, to go out of Galus. So everyone should go out to his own Galus, like the Rebbe said in the Sicha of Chavches Nisan, which everyone knows, the famous Sicha, and that's the reason why there is this base Menachem, this base Mashiach here, because the Rebbe said, Everyone that knows Rabbi Cohen, Rabbi Chaim Yitzchak Cohen, knows the famous word of Asukal Asher Bicholtechem, and he is a Dug Mechaya of the Asukal Asher Bicholtechem. He is a living example of doing more than Kol Asher Bicholtechem, even with Messir Snefesh. To do, to bring Mashiach, and the Rebbe said in this sicha that the, one of the problems why we're not doing enough is because Uma Docha Mizdochechet in Agolus Pnimi in Avedes Hashem. So one of the of the ways to go out of this Golos Pnimi from uh, in Avedes Hashem is through learning the Inyan Igulu Mashiach, through learning Chesidus, through learning Nigla. Everyone's supposed to learn everything in the Torah. But Pashat Midav Zitzin on Lernen on Abn Kviz said Torah Borabim. We should get together. Should come out Kviz from this Fabring and should come out new Kviz, new Kviz Itim and new Shiurim and the place here in Beis Menachem and all in houses every Thursday night, any night in, during the week should come out the Kviz. Take a Chavuza. Start with two. It will become three. It will become four. Sit and learn the Rabbi Sichas, the Rabbi Smaimorim of Gilu Mashiach, Likut Sichas of Nesi Dereinu, like the Rabbi says about Inyan Gilu Mashiach. Take a Mesech the Sanhedrin, learn the Inyanim Al Pinigla, take anything but learn the Inyanim of Gilu Mashiach, Sidas, Nigla, everything, and the Rabbi Shaz or Half and Sheif Alu Advarim be. To, by me too, I should also learn much more the Inyonim and do, and being misnagged like the Rebbe wants from us, is all feeling the Shen being Mesa Moshiach. Chaim,
Einstach Rosh Hashanah. It says that Eivishter, when he created the world, Stakel by Reise or Bora Alma, looked into the Torah, created the world. Today is the Rosh Hashanah of Pnimius HaTorah. So when we want to understand how the world is going to be in the, in the coming year, we have to look into Sefer HaTanya, which is the Chumish of Pnimius HaTorah, and derive from it a lesson how we're going to overcome the Nisyonis that we're all faced with in the coming year. What is the Avoida now? In order to know the Avoida, it's good for Bosa Reisha Ozil. We have to see what the Rebbe says, the Rosh. The Rebbe says the Avoida now, each and every one of us, Shluchim, each and every Yid in the world, even Umas HaOlam, as the Rebbe said, is to bring Mashiach. That is our Avodah, to prepare ourselves, prepare our families, prepare the world for Bias HaMashiach. And that is our Avodah. Tanya begins with the word Tanya. And the whole Sefer is called Tanya. And Tanya is Oisius Eison. Eison, as the Friedrich Rebbe teaches, means alt, hart und stark. That the power of Tanya is to overcome all the Nisyonis because it gives us the strength, it gives us the power, it gives us the ability to overcome all the Nisyonis. What is the Nisyon of our days? Nisyon is that we're not sure how we should behave. We have Sveikas. Like it says that Amalek will come and try to make us cold before Bias HaMashiach. And Amalek is big matriosophic. Avopus is the same thing, Amalek is matriosophic. Amalek big matriosophic. In Vospa state the Sophic, we know that the Alter Rebbe said that he is an enical of the Balshemte Beruchnius. And he didn't want to be a Nifrit from the Balshemte, even Klape Chutz, even Klape Goim. Even though that by seeming to be a Nifrit, he could have achieved that he would have been freed from all the difficulties. But he didn't want to be a Nifrit from the Balshemte, even Klape Chutz. And he said about the Baruch of who was the enical of the Baal Shem Tev. And we'll soon come to him, Bezra Hashem, that he is an enical Begashmias, and I'm an enical Beruchnias. The Baruch of Mezibes had issues with the person of Torah Sachsidus as it was done by the Alter Rebbe. And the reason was that when the Baal Shem Tev went into Hecholi Shal Mashiach and asked, Ei Masai Kaosi Ma, and Mashiach answered, Lekishu Yifutsu, Mai Nosecho Chutzo, the Baal Shem Tev cried to take this Avde Kodesh and to Tishtopachen Al Beroish Kul Chutzois, to take the Evan Yukoro, and this Evan Yukoro should be grinded down and should be spilt and should, be, should pour all over the place. The Baal Shem Tov cried, because he, the, uh, he felt the yakras of Torah Sachsidus. And Rav Baruch Mezibes cared about the tears of the Baal Shem Tov, and Alter Rebbe cared about the pneumius of the Baal Shem Tov. 
Now, Baruch Mezebus wasn't a Catholic Kanye, wasn't just anybody. He was a Ish Kodesh with Ruach HaKodesh. I remember as a younger Bocher, I was speaking to Ramendel Futafas about various Machlokes. And I said, Lachoyrem, I wanted to hear what he said. I knew the answer, but I wanted to hear it from him. The Alta Rebbe also had Machlokes with Raboruch. And Raboruch was a Ish Kodesh Moid. So he said, that's the difference. That Raboruch was Ish Kodesh, the Balruach HaKodesh. So therefore, this was a different type of Machlokes. Today's Machlokes is not on that level. Raboruch cared about the tears of the Baal Shem Tov. The Alter Rebbe cared about the Pneumis of the Baal Shem Tov, about the Oisvim Bias HaMashiach. Today, there are people who say they care about the COVID of Lubavitch. And even if we say that they are but Agosel of Raboruch of Mezebus, Let's try. But we know that we have to care about the panemius of the Rebbe. And for Ket, we saw the Rebbe cry that after was bringt me the Shorot Bias HaMashiach. We saw time and again tears coming down from the Rebbe's holy eyes about Bias HaMashiach. So today, those of us who care about the tears of the Rebbe, who care about the Pneumius of the Rebbe, who care about Masas Nafshe of the Rebbe, we have to do everything we can, Mikol HaBechines, whatever we care, to bring Mashiach Mitzitkenu here now, through doing the heroes of the Rebbe, of <coughs> learning in Yoni Gula, Mash Gula Mashiach, teaching in Yoni Gula Mashiach, be Mephasim in Yoni Gula Mashiach, and then are bringing Mashiach Tzikeinu Dor Lamata B'Poyol Mamish.
much, Rabbi Gluck, for your very warm words. And once again, I wish to take the opportunity to express our heartfelt appreciation and thanks for your continuing support for us and all the help which you give us. Shlichus is an Indian from Masira Snefesh, one of the Bali Masira Snefesh, one of the Shluchim from the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach, Shlich in New York and Flatbush, Rav Shneer, Zalman, Liberov, well, now be the next speaker, Hikavas Divrei Brocha Vachizuk, Rav Liberov. What a weird title of the first to me. Hey, the title of the first to me. Okay. But I'm going to get to the first time. I'm going to get to the first time. I'm going to get to the first time. I'm the but then it becomes suitable to use the lotion of the Teva. When it's hung even the lotion of the Teva, but I can say this. Huh? It's not my when it became Rosh Hashanah. Samach Beis. Yeah, that's basic. I'm saying the lotion. Samach Beis, right before the Rebbe, the Rebbe Neshama came down to this world. So right before that, as a preparation, it is Kislev Samach Beis, is when it became Rosh Hashanah, the Chesidus. And the Hemshech of them, the time came the lotion of of the Shana Teva, but Dark Exodus, the Limit Exodus, the Kaseva, the Kaseva. The kids are, the Emmas, this is a Chesidus of a bringing, just in the form of a ta table set with the, with the head table with a mic. Uh, Ruben, can I have this line on it? She came to Shabbos. It's one of the words from the Rebbe, Al Haitis Mazevi Noch Mashke. You don't have to take Mashke. But the Mzetus Okay. Several times you hear from the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Lotion Once in a while you also heard from the Rebbe, the and also, we're in the Sheva Baruch, as Rabbi Cohen mentioned. By the way, Shukayach will give me the opportunity to come back to my hometown once in a while, say hello to the people. So in the Sheva Baruch, since we're now in the Sheva Baruch, let's talk one of the main celebrations of Chesidim in this generation, celebrating this Kislev. It's one of the Sheva Baruch, of you see the reign of the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach. And in the Maimah of the Chodaydi that the Rebbe said, plus he was Magia. And plus, he gave it out also by Yodhi Akdesha and the Blue Countries, the Rosh Hashanah. You have the Maim of Lachadoidi, Tavshin Yedalad. In that Maim, the Rebbe talks about the union of Milsa de Pichasa, which is, which is also an union of, of Psicha. You open up a Milsa de Pichasa. So we have over here Paiskin with Bracha, Paiskin with Ramalcha, and Paiskin with Milsa de Pichasa. So how do you do it all in one? Well, if you choose Paiskin Milsa de Pichasa, you have all three. What's the Degrest de Bracha? Then when a yid smiles, to make a yid smile, it's the biggest place in the bracha. And Dvar Malchus, how many times do we hear from the Rebbe the Loshan Bashim Chavatul Levav? So it's a, it's a Pisgum Kavua, not just a Pisgum, but that's a Yerol the Maisa Bashim Chavatul Levav. So you have a Dvar Malchus, you do a Milsa de Bdicha, so you're also saying you're making people Bashim Chavatul Levav. So it's Kedai to be Peshach with Milsa de Bdicha. I read a Maisa today that as soon as the Rebbe was arrested, after Sukkot, so everyone got busy. You read Sefer I told us, it's a everyone was devoted. Amol Zuckman, that, that our generation is much nicer than the previous generation, Stag Amos. But sometimes it looks a little, I don't know, you look, read Sefer I told us, at least on paper, it looks like that the people were devoted, or maybe because they wasn't used, maybe because they were not used to it, they didn't know for sure. Like we know today, when it's Retat Sarah, we know for sure that there's an end, a good end to it. Those days, maybe they didn't have that, uh, they didn't know so much of the other El Aliyayna. So maybe that's why they took it so serious, I don't know. But they took it really serious, and they were really devoted. It's impressive to see, Pashat, the, the, the Inyanim that you never heard today, 
people writing up a list of all their money that they have. People didn't, people didn't keep anything of their own. They, they, they gave everything away, whatever was possible. The last uh, stickle bright that was available to just in case they'll need to, for the Alta Rebbe's release, every, everyone was devoted. Everyone did everything. There was one chassid called Moshe Yitzchak Miyas, uh, Yasi, very, very famous chassid. That's the famous word that uh, the Rebbe says, Purim Tav Shachai, was the word that the middle Rebbe told us as a chassidus of a tzibbles of the Rebbe, of a chassidus of the Chazun. That's, I think, to Moshe Yitzchak, yeah? So Moshe Yitzchak Miyas, what did he get involved with? What was his uh, occupation after he disc- after, not after he disc- after the arrest? He collected a lot of potatoes. What did he do with the potatoes? At the Srib, and what do you do from potatoes? One of the ways to make mashka. He was preparing mashka. He was, he was sure that there's going to be a nitzachan. So in Mele, he was preparing mashka for the nitzachan. I remember after the time of the court case, by the way, the court case of Didan Notzach started with Yitzhak Kislev 20 years ago. The protest, the, the, the mishpat, Came, came, started Yutes Kislev exactly 20 years ago, and and right after the Mishpat started, being in 770 those days and seeing the, how serious the Maimon Demasa was, a lot of people, even till today, don't know enough, don't understand enough why there was such an outburst of such great simcha, because maybe they don't know enough of how much Tari Surim they ever had in this Kufa. It wasn't just like a, a simple Muhammad uh, of Ansforim. Sforim is also, that was the Rebbe called the Sforim, that was the the chilek of, of the goof. The Rebbe even used the Gashmiistic expression, because that's what people like us understand, Gashmiist. So the chilek of the goof of, of Nesidereinu, and uh, also because Bechlal, nowadays we see the importance of connecting Ruchnius and Gashmiist. Then the Rebbe also wrote a very sharp answer, when people want to do, separate Ketayna Kavayochel, that the Friedrich Rebbe wrote something in Asofa Velochutz, that he didn't, uh, um, fully mean what he wrote. So the Rebbe then used an expression of Kila Zavidazara to say the separation of Ruchnius and Gashmius. It can be a Ruchnius and Gashmius is Hashem of Lakim, it's the same thing. So the kids of the Rebbe, it was a big tsar of Yisurim, and, and uh, the Rebbe even himself. But more than, why was it? Because more than just the Sfarim, it was a Mulchama, and I think the Rebbe himself expressed it. It wasn't a part of Chsidim. The Rebbe himself, on one of the occasions, then not Barabim, but uh, amongst a few people that the Rebbe was speaking to, the the, the 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 people of the Vada go to the Chabad, so they they were trying to the the Mishra stand in the minion. They didn't understand the issue, so they presented to the Rebbe a pshora. They thought it was like a like a it was an argument over here over some type of rechush within the Shagas. They didn't understand. They still don't understand. So the Rebbe, it wasn't just an argument over some rechush that you can make pshoras. The Rebbe pointed, I think, to his chair. I think I remember that. That's, I mean, that's what it's written somewhere. He pointed to his chair and he says, I'm Muhammad from Benkel. It's a, it's a battle on the chair, on the, on the kisei. It's a, it was a serious Muhammad. The Rebbe expressed himself with Dibur, and he said that to Muhammad with all the Rabbeim. He mentioned each one of the Rabbeim. And that's why also, Taka, when the Rebbe, talking about Inyoni Chasna, so the Rebbe uh, um, used the expression when he broke out, when he bursted out the Inyan Barabim, the Rebbe tried, obviously, to do everything without the, the consequences that it brought. I mean, you can't say the word Chil Hashem Chas Shalom because it's not shy that the Rebbe have any access to an Indian, a Philo Bedakas, the Dakas of Indian Chil Hashem. But Lepayel, I don't know how to use the words, but when it came out Barabim, it definitely was not exciting. It wasn't exciting. It, it, it was Kedai because the world learned to understand how we teach the Indian from the Rebbe is. But Lepayel Mamash didn't come in the way that the Rebbe, Al Derech like Yutis Kislev, Al Derech the Rebbe pre, the Al Rebbe wanted that Yutis Kislev should be Nitzach and Le'enei Kolamim through the court. Kenazogan, I mean, he wanted it, otherwise he wouldn't have gone. But uh, it, there's other ways. The Abish, they can do it in the even of Teva Nireva Nigla. So Lepoyal, when the Rebbe started to publicize it, which was Yud Beis, and then the Ikat Tezvav Tamos, Tav Shemem Hei, the Rebbe started the Loshen, he said, first of all, the Rebbe started the Fabringen. The Rebbe then unusually came back from the oil before Shkia, and he davened then. Uh, uh, <coughs> And then there was, there, 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 the ground was made there that it was going to be a Fabrengen. It was a sudden Fabrengen to 12 Tammuz. It wasn't a usual occasion. And the Rebbe started to Fabrengen, I think, 6.30. Usual time for Fabrengen is 9.30. If I'm not mistaken, 6.30. But it was definitely before Shkia. And the Rebbe said he wanted the Chaparayin to be in 12 Tammuz, which is a Hemshech to Chagigul of Yudbeis Tammuz. And how did the Fabrengen start? 
Nowadays, it's very common. It's women remember to have to and the good name of the Nala Rabbein. But once upon a time, it was a very special, dramatic moment. It was Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah was the good name of Older Rabbein. Later years, Mamash, Memches, Mentes, I don't know exactly. They never started to do it also. Mitzvah, Simfaster, and Shvuas, but Beka Rosh Hashanah. Tezvav Tamuz Memhei, the Rebbe instructed to sing all the Nigunim of Older Rabbein. And when it came to the Nigun of the Rebbe, before they got a chance to start Hu Elokeinu, the Rebbe started of the Maimi, Yehi Hashem Elokeinu Yimono. That's the Pasuk which is connected to Gimel Tamuz. And the Rebbe then, a little further down in the Fabring, and the Rebbe started off by saying, as a Megit Subrechendam Kos, I'm just kidding, the Nigun of the Chasna. It's an expression, Megit Subrechendam Kos. And then the Rebbe spoke very strong about this Indian. So, I mentioned the Indian of the Nigunim. It's a kid that was a Muhammad against all the Rabbeim. The bottom line is that, that uh, getting back to the Indian Asimcha. So, in Mela, when we saw there was such a Tsar of Yisurim, so, so we knew that Wendell be in Tzachan, and we were going to Zichas of Dainan in Tzachan. So, we started to collect Mashka. <laughs> every Chasna, every Chasna would be uh, leftovers. We would collect uh, the Mashka and put it away for the Yemen Tzachan. I remember then there was a chasna by Taich. Taich is a bar chove. We managed to get a case and a half of mashka and after the chasna. Packed it upstairs, that in Fabanda it's called the Farats, that in, and uh, the kids said, I don't know, I don't know, one year old, listen, we didn't mashka, and they have a broke into the Mitzvah tank office and they stole all the mashka. But the problem is, why do they say, I don't mashka? Because why do you have to collect mashka for Dida Notzach? As soon as Dida Notzach came, so get gossip in seconds, mashka was coming from all the sides. So now we also don't have to write katoshkas for mashka because there's no doubt that all the liquor stores will belong to us in the moment of the Gula Mitzvah Shleimah, which is the night you just kiss live, hey Tavshin, Samach Vov. So Mamela, the Zog and Chaim, that's first of all, and then maybe I'll be able to uh, take over Rav Matzah's job. <laughs> Okay. After the place in the middle of the Dichas, I don't want to make the Yosef Be'im, so I don't want to get too serious. <laughs> but I just want to, there's a word, I'm always mocked to say, the Rebbe's word, B'Shem Da'al Terebbe. I'm a Da'al Terebbe I never heard it from Da'al Terebbe, I heard it from the Rebbe every week. Chaim Chaim, Chia Adineinu Mereinu Rabbeinu Melech HaMashiach, Lailam Boy. I just want to point out a few Nakudas, eleven with the tight, stack a little of egg in the boy's waters. But you know, Sikh is Baruch Hashem, you can see and hear. So I'm not going to have the, I'm just out there and uh, to take out some Nakudas that can be u- used for the Aveda, for, for, for the Aveda Yechida. Today's Chumish, eleven with the tight, I point, I paid attention to very interesting Nakuda that I didn't pay attention in the past. It says over there that uh, Reuven, I mean, uh, um, uh, the brothers, uh, they saw Yosef coming along, and when you learn the Chumash, it sounds like L'chuven Ar-Geyu, V'nire Ma'yir Chalem It seems to be, uh, it seems to be like a slangy way of saying it. Uh, we'll kill him and we'll see what's going to be. We'll see, we'll see what's going to happen. <laughs> what's going to happen is Chalemus. That's what it sounds like. But Rashi, Pshut HaShel Mikra, Emphasizes so strong that it's impossible to say such a thing that 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 shvatim. Chalon teira. There's no gleich vertlich in teira. There's no. Uh, Milsa, by the way, most of the bdichas doesn't mean a joke. Most of the bdichas is something to make you smile. But there's no jokes in teira. There's no gleich vertlich in teira. So 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 Rashi explains that. What does he mean? The Eibushter says, "Vanirem ayu chalom myself." You guys are saying l'chuvin argeil. I'm saying "Vanirem ayu chalom myself." And then Rashi doesn't even. It's not enough for Rashi. Rashi. And he says, it, because it's impossible to say. It's, a, it's not usual so much in Rashi. He, he digs in and he says, you cannot say that it means the shvat, the, the, that the Shvatim said it. That can mean uh, that the Shvatim meant to say the gleich like, vertel like, like people seem to think that it means. Because if they're planning to kill him, then how is there going to be Chalamaisov? So, so Rashi will not allow the possibility of thinking that this is a gleich vertel that the Shvatim said, we're going to see what's going to happen to his chalaymas. There's no such a thing as gleich vertel in Taira. There's no, the Rebbe says something, he means it exactly what he said. The Rebbe said, There's no gleich vertel. There's, there's, uh, everything is precise, everything is, is uh, uh, 
just be, just before I came here, my, my daughter called me up from New York. She wanted to, she has a, some type of a thing about iskashos. She's looking for sicha and iskashos. So what came to my mind right away, I told her, look up the sicha of, 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 uh, of, of Sukkot Memches. When the Rebbe explains how the reason why he changed his minhag of not holding the esrug, I'm sorry, of, 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 yeah, the minhag was not to hold the esrug throughout davening. By halal, I'm sorry. And just to hold it b'shaft the four times that you shake it, and 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 uh, and hakel shnas hakel and amches the Rebbe changed the minhag and he held it. So you know the way it works. The first day, maybe even the second day, you have Rahman Islam, the people they don't have the right attitude and they think that the Rebbe is not at from some hus. They think it's uh, so. Really, the Rebbe shy to make uh, forget. Even though pisechel doesn't make sense, why should the Rebbe forget after so many years? Hergel also, the Rebbe has no less hergel than anyone else. Oh whatever. <coughs> the truth is that, you know, maybe I'm wrong, I shouldn't say that. I never heard anyone say that, so why should I be chasoshon b'chayshet that anyone thought like that? But in other cases, sometimes you hear people think that the Rebbe shayach to forget, or whatever. Kids, I took three or four days. I don't know why the Rebbe waited so long. Maybe the Rebbe wanted Amazon Salein for staying. And the uh, <coughs> the Rebbe needed to explain it. And the Rebbe explained himself that why did he change the minhag? So the unbelievable attitude that the Rebbe teaches us in his kashos, Hilchus his kashos, that the Friedrich Rebbe, the Rebbe says that the Friedrich Rebbe didn't hold the lul of an esrik, the whole the esrik throughout Halal. So the Rebbe says in Baderech Vyashleima, but you know it says in Chodaydi that what by the Rebbe's Vyashleima by Unze Zicher. It's a part of the Chodaydi also. So so uh, the Rebbe says Vyashleima that the reason was because of health reasons, because the esrik is so delicate and shouldn't have any scratches, and because the Friedrich Rebbe, the Gashmir's was was maybe his hands were shaking with hulu, so Mamela he didn't want to hold the asterisk any any extra, only when he must. So the Rebbe is not giving the reason. The Rebbe could have hid the reason. No, he's giving the reason why the Friedrich Rebbe did it. And then he says, step by step, first he gives the reason. The Khura, the Seichel of Poshet, of an Ish Poshet. <laughs> and and uh, and even Seichel the Torah would say that it should be that we shouldn't do like that. The frat that the Minag makes so much sense. Because the minigail, the reason why you hold the, the, the lulav throughout, hakel, throughout uh, the, the, the holding in of our minim is achdus. So why shouldn't you hold the esrik? So the Friedrich Rebbe can be a reason. So the, but the Rebbe, there's no such thing as zaitik reasons. There's no like merit. There's no such a thing. The see that Reino did that? I say that from Tom. But even more says the Rebbe. He says, Ad kedekach, you have to do exactly what the Rebbe does. Even if you think that the reason is time ibrius, whatever it may be. After the kaf that the Rebbe says, he's Megala, that for him to change it, he changed the minhag. He's about to explain why he changed. But he wants you to know, what, to him to change the minhag, he need, the Rebbe says three Lashonis, he says, this is Heipach Ruchi, Heipach Tivi, and the Gedaf Onkum and some Messiah's Nefesh. Gleich Vettel? There's not such a thing like Vettel, I'm Rebbe. Messiah's Nefesh. The Rebbe needs Messiah's Nefesh to change a minhag of the Sidereinu, and which the minhag is Meyusad L'Chure, Ozicha, on a, on a reason of time of Brias, because I rebbe to tepes, got time of Brias. All these nourishes, bathing, that, that I'm, I'm ashamed to even have it in my machshava, not, not my own machshavas, but even to people give all these nourishes, bathing of what, what went on, b'shas amira seyichi, all these shtusim. Even if you are shaita, you still have to do it, because you have to understand that there's no such a thing as zaitik reasons. Everything is precise, <laughs> so Mela, the discussion to be so strong, that's one message that we can take from the Chumash, that out state everything is in Torah, and you, in Chas Shalom, it's so meduyek that the Rebbe Kaviyochal needs to serious And then the Rebbe explained why he did it, because since, he, since the Rebbe Zayim of Eise, since the Rebbe was demanding, he says, since I was demanding, the Rebbe didn't say those Lashonis of that, that lotion of him, you saw my last, last is, that's just based. <laughs> ah, okay. The Rebbe, the Rebbe didn't say, the Rebbe says that because he demanded that the Torah and Hakil, al Kedem Mesiris Nefesh, so he also had to do an initial Mesiris Nefesh. What was his Mesiris Nefesh and Hakil? To bring the Lul of an Eshrit together, we take Mesiris Nefesh. <laughs> you ever heard such races? His kashus, such a level, this is, this is called pure, Vild the Hiskashus, like the Rebbe uses sometimes lotion Vild. This is absolutely wild. Wild means it has no, it's, it's, it's no, no chiz in seichel. This is mamash l'mayla metamadas. This is called pure shtus dikdushin. 
And that's and that the Rebbe is saying Ibarabim. He wrote the Rabbim. I'm saying that from Zechfirin. Then we go a little vaite vaite in the in the pasuk, and it says, "Ilu lemanat el hashiva el avim." Reuven said, "Throw him in the pit," and the Torah is megala. The reason why Reuven the reason why Reuven said to throw him in the pit is because because he planned to come and take him out. So the Rebbe brings down sometimes his gemara. Halfly the gemara. Ilu hoye yadei Reuven. She cost him Torah. If Reuven would have known that it's going to be written in Torah. That, that he had that in mind, he would have done Shalei Barach more. And the Rebbe is Mafli, he says, Reuven, saying it from the Yud Bey Shvatim. And even Reuven, if he knew that the Torah was going to write about it, he would have done more. That's the Rebbe's Yisrael, why even though Matan Baseis is very good, but at the same time, Mitzvah Lefaris and Mitzvah Mitzvah is even better. And besides the fact that there's always, a, the Rebbe says Mitzvah Lefaris and Mitzvah Mitzvah, the Rebbe always, because we men the year of Bechin Yasu, that's one reason. Another reason is the person himself is going to get more excited to do. And, and if a person wants Matan Besesa, there's always a place for Matan Besesa to do even more quietly. So that's just another opportunity to Lafar Samay Samitz, even though it's Mufursun Kla, the Pulu Sukhaim Yitzchok, and just to connect it to what uh, Rabbi Ilando said in the beginning. I don't know what he exactly meant, but the way I understood is that everyone has to be part of the Rebbe's Maestas. No one should do no one favors. Uh, 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 as much as Chaim Yitzchok is. Uh, is uh, doing them serious nefesh, and if he's not lying and he's telling me <laughs> that's nish talking geld, <laughs> so uh, so Mamela, everyone over here should not just come and join and do a favor, just to you know to to, to be another body. But that, yeah, the end of the is to be part of the Rebbe's Moisdus, to be a part of it, is the biggest favor for you. There's so many letters in Hebrew Kodesh how the Rebbe tells people how oh, this is the Tzina Ashba, and that shouldn't be the reason. The reason shouldn't be because it's the Tzina Ashba. A person should. Give stocker because he knows it's going to work back for him. That's how it's not going to look. But nevertheless, after Chavon Eichet, that Peter Yigashmi. So everyone shouldn't worry that if you do more, but Gufei Benavshem Ramaynei, it can be such a major atzlach over here. It looks like I don't know. I'm not saying it looks like it's one person, and everyone else is uh, following along and doing a favor. I don't want to have to show him bechayshed anyone, but you know, in chayish nelem can yeshbei. So there's always, there's always more way to do. But another uh, another nekud in Ilohei Yedei is that if we chsed him chsedus b'chalal yotis kislev is the end of his bainus being his bainus ech ketzad yavi la'ava v'diyir la'haftas Hashem l'kecha how could the house the hafta tzivui the tzivui is on his bainus when a person is his bainus and of course it's supposed to bring him to hava v'diyir I don't know exactly how it works I never managed to try it but uh, I mean his bainus that's what it says his bainus brings you to hava so. We have the we have the the galus of atzim samuhus and the lubish beguf gashmi that that works that's easy that's one of the reasons I think it says in svarim but the eibush that gemach dinu for chetzi elamato or chetzi elamayva that the moshe rabbeinu zisha alakim because we connect with nashim gashmi so we connect with the eibush that in azayis and halayfun people should be misbeinan and the ilah hoye yadei ruven we don't have to say that's a little bit takets from yud be shvatim but we're already ahead we're already many generations ahead of ruven. So by us, it shouldn't be in a gather of Ilo Hoya Yedeya that will be in the and that's going to make us do more. Ilo Hoya Yedeya, the person is misbeinen, how much these pu'ulas are adding nachas to the Rebbe. And nachas, nachas is one thing, but bringing, the Rebbe uses the words that Yeshev v'kaitze ruach v'kilin enayim v'seivul tachlu e'hagolas. You know, the problem is we're not misbeinen enough. Do we really, really, literally, the whole thing of Chassidus is, and the connection to Moshe Shabbatai is, that the Emunah shouldn't be by from Makif. We should practice what we believe. We all have the problem. We always blame the Ganav, and we say, Ganva po machtarat arachmona kari. It's like a weird situation. The Ganav says, Hashem, help me steal. Why? Because it's a Emunah that he really has. By from Makif is only Makif. And the Ufta of Moshe Rabbein is that it should be by from Pnimi. It should be a reality. And really you won't Ganva. So why is everyone blaming the Ganav? We all have the same problem. We all don't act according to our Muna. We believe much more than we really act on it. The Muna has to be with Nimius. We have to talk and believe that the Rebbe is Yeshev, Bekaitzer Ruach, Bekilin, and I am, Bekaitzer Ruach, Bekilin, and I am. If you want to ha- think more in a happy tone, so don't think that the Rebbe is suffering, Yisurim. Think that the Rebbe is going to have more nachas. And the more we misbeinen, Ketzer Yovela, Vosavid Rossi, the more we misbeinen in this union of the Rebbe, Abba to the Rebbe, which is the same thing as Abba to the Lakus, that then we'll do much more. Ilu Haya Yedea, the Yedea. The, 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 when a person is misbein and it brings him to you, the adas and the care of yichah, and mamela we will do much more. We wouldn't do just that minimum that we do. We're doing what we're doing nowadays. 
Chas Shalom, I don't want Kivay Yochel, the Ebishter should hear what we're talking about over here, because the Ebishter can get more taiva, and he say, oh, they understand that they have to do more, I'll give them more to do. So Kivay Yochel, this is only between us. Oh, but <laughs> the Nekudah is that we have to just, our doing shouldn't be, and, and like Rabbi Lando said, I'm only talking to myself. It's a famous, uh, famous saying, but it's not real. I'm embarrassed to stand over here, Kivay Yochel, I'm telling you, I mean, it's obvious that I'm talking to all of our, to myself too, our doing should not be limited to the way we would do 20 years ago. We have to understand, Kipshute, that this is Mama Shesha, Bukhaytu, the Ruach, the Kilin, and Naim, the Rebbe suffering, Yisurim. Any way you can make yourself shake and wake and understand that it is a real business. This is not just for fun. It's a new movement. I, I want to tell you just, I don't want to be my as much too much more, but uh, talking, we spoke, we connected this to this forum. So, hey, Tavis, the Rebbe said a lotion. When the Rebbe spoke, hey, Tavis, after Mincha, that sudden sicha. So the Rebbe said, was it then or maybe a day or two later? I'm not sure. I think it was that day. The Rebbe said that, um, that Madgata Taina is Chabad is Nishpi'ilim. That's such a Kenegat. Chabad is Nishpi'ilim. They're not active. It's like an old oil. So the Rebbe, the why is the Rebbe Mishyach Estach? Zab, Zab, Perodam. Who cares what he says? But, but the Rebbe, again, there's no such a thing like Red Lachamehet, the Baal Shem Tozok. Life has to be a hero. The Rebbe always takes advantage of every every koil ole nidof. So they say, not to not to be afraid of every koil ole nidof, chas v'shalom, but if you hear a leaf move, you should know it's a, it's a, it's a hero amel the ma'ila. The, the, the pair of them said that Chabad is not active, says the Rebbe, we're going to be more active. I had a conversation, Erev, in, conne in, in connection to my coming over here, I had a conversation with someone, and he... Uh, in the head, we're talking about the Yoni Mashiach, and, uh, and the guy, it's a Tzuki Shepherd, he tells me that the Rebbe says, talking about Yichi and how important Yichi is, so he tells me that, look, in the Sikh of Chayisora, what are you, you, you said, you, he, he's telling me that I'm all off. Why am I all off? Because what the Rebbe says is that what's the Teichen HaAchros of Yichi HaMelech, of Yichi HaDeinei Melech David Leilam, is, is, um, is, is Galus Metzius the Melech HaMashiach. So everyone talks to us that that's, that means that the Achraz of Yechi brings to... He says, yeah, he says, you got it all off. He says, it's Teichen. He said, the Rebbe is demanding Pnimius, Mr. Pnimi. Shalom Aleichem. <laughs> Mr. Pnimi. Teichen, he says. The Teichen HaAchraz. And, and not Achraz is Chitzenius. Uh, whatever, this is weird stuff. But the kids are stuck at weird. But nevertheless, when the Chalpi, uh, you have to learn something. You hear a Kailal and Nidav. You got to learn how you roll from it. So first of all, I right away managed to show him Meshkacha Pratis, and I, I saw that there was a, a copy of Xaviyat. It was printed in the past in Yechi Melech, but they reprinted it in the base Mashiach this week, where the Rebbe talks about the Achraz of Yechi Melech without saying the word Teichen. <laughs> in base Nisan, the Rebbe says, V'yesh l'sayim ola hashlim ha'aseinu v'abed aseinu, k'ilu l'achraz ad admosa v'achraz ad Yechi Melech. And the Rebbe doesn't say Teichen ha'achraz ad Yechi Melech. And it happens to be a shtikal hagoah on that line. Because, Rechman al I don't know if you know of such things, but there are such people that uh, have fashid and machshav azaras about uh, different inyanim. That, so I showed him, look, you see this line, the Rebbe saw this line. Because he made a hagoah on this line. And it doesn't say the word teichen achroza, but sof kol sof. But after chepes lem nairo, al derech, like that manuel said, Chabad is not pe'ilim. That, yeah, why not? And that's what I was telling you, what's hakstak up? People are machas yichia melech, they're not doing it with teichen. The achroz has to be said in any case, because tak, it's true that in Chabad there are certain inyonim that we dafka don't say bedibur, because to put more emphasis on the pnimiyas shabadover. Emes, animaimin, we tak, don't say bedibur, we sing it a lot, yeah, but don't, out there like Hanukkah, min Chabad is not to light the menorah by the window. <coughs> Just in case anyone has a tainah, it's not presuming nisa, Chabad l'chura l'pi min Chabad is no presuming nisa. <laughs> we never made such presuming nisa that, that only little menorahs by the window can, can even dream to do. The pres in other words, we have the Prasum in Yisra. So just in case Chabad doesn't say the word Animaimen after the, the, the Animaimen after Davening, it's felt up as in the Dibur of Animaimen, we sing it and we shturim. It's funny to say that Chabad is missing, is missing the Animaimen, we don't say it after Davening. But there is an Indian that there's certain Inyanim that you don't say the Dibur, put more emphasis on the, on the Pneumius. Like the Animaimen, like Shavisi Hashem, like the Summit, opposite the Omer, the Chabad called the Inyan Shavisi Hashem, like the Summit, the whole Chabad is Shavisi Hashem, like the Summit. But the certain yon, but that's Eil Chobayel Chidushe. That's only when it's a Chidush. But usually, the Rebbe says, Achroz Ad Yechiyah Melech. We met Amol Kupnitz again. And the time there has to be, there has to be Dafka the Teichen of it. The Teichen has to be for sure. But you have to also say it because it's a Yisur Bedibur. There's a Sichon Lamadzayim where the Rebbe says Dafka the Inyan of saying Bedibur Yechiyah Melech. 
But at the same time, let's bring in more teichel. Why not? If the guy has a taina, if Chabad is not peeling, that Meshachistim don't have enough teichel, we'll bring in more teichel. Bring in more neshama into the Yechid. The Yechid is very demanding. The Yechid is very demanding. It's not just the Achroza Taka. It's a Achroza Dafka. But it's not just the Achroza. In other words, just like mitzvahs have to be done, you have to crunch the matzah with your teeth, and if you don't crunch the matzah with your teeth, and you have all the kavonas, you have the teichen of the hachroza, the teichen of achilas matzah, but the garnish is red. But when you dafka have the hachroza b'dibur, without any kavonas, you did it. You did the mitzvah. But at the same time, everyone understands that you're supposed to have a neshama, and just to quickly jump over to the to the Tanya of today, and trying to also talk Maisel Apoel, because I know people like good speeches, I don't know, yes or no, but Maisel Apoel is the Ike, the Rebbe Kopsuch in the world of Maisel Ike. And, um, you know, uh, I'm sitting over here next to my father, and it's a Bislazeum Bakvem, you know. So everyone says sometimes, it's coming In other words, my father doesn't have such experience of standing by mics and speaking, so I'm going to speak for him. There's a certain Indian that he Baruch Hashem planted into me, and and I and I kochzuk in it, and I also was eager to get on the Rebbe when I was in Morristown, a certain Ksav Yad Kodesh, that uh, even though it was stolen from me, but it's still my possession. I got a Ksav Yad Kodesh that was concerning the union of Dibu Beis Tefillah, which that's the tiny of today. That, that tiny today doesn't talk much about Dibu Beis Tefillah, but talks about the union of Tefillah. So when I kochzuk in a union that's not, you know, the kochzuk in in union was the Rebbe Retnishvig in them. We say Retnishvig in them. The Rebbe doesn't koch in it. Kol Tarei Mitzvos is the Rebbe's union. But to come and kochzuk in a union. You know, the Rebbe makes me for time, and we do everything, but you can't kochzuch in a... If I have time to kochzuch, I have to kochzuch in a... in a... in the Rebbe's in Yonim, which nowadays is only Avedah Yechida. So I thought about it, I said, that's when the Gea in Yonim should not say to you. If someone comes along and with the mom wants to make a mitzvah, let's vote for the Tanyahu. <laughs> or if someone comes with a mitzvah, let's make mitzvah tzitzis. You can't do that. You can't make new mitzvah. You can do in Yonim, but you can't make new mitzvah. You can't kochzuch and make a shturim about a certain Indian. That's in Yoni I say to you, but Sacha called the Indian of not talking in the middle of the evening is the whole Indian of just not talking. You're not taking away time. When I call such a Mifzah Tzitzis, and I want to make a Mifzah called Mifzah Tzitzis, that means I'm, devo- I'm, I'm going off, I'm spending my time positively in doing an Indian that the Rebbe didn't choose as a Shah. The Rebbe wants everyone to wear Tzitzis, for sure. But there's no, it's not the Shah, there's no such a Mifzah. And nowadays there's no Mifzah, there's only one Mifzah, which is called the Veda Yechida. So, but when you're talking about the Indian of not doing, not speaking in the middle of davening, and davening should be, should be, uh, his dark design, like the Rebbe writes in today's Tanya, so, there's no, there's no, you're not, you're not putting your curses anywhere else, you're just not speaking in the middle of davening. Lahat gish, no, nothing is mark of the Gula, like the Rebbe writes today in the Tanya, that's already not, in other words, like the Rebbe says about the Rambam, that the Rambam wrote, in the Dovah Tali Elibet Shuvim, say that the Rambam wrote it, but he, the time, a, a time will come, and it won't be Tali. Nowadays, the Gula is not Tali in Shuva. The Rebbe writes, that uh, now that uh, most of the years alone in Lamaikish is holding back the Gula, no, it's not holding back the Gula anymore. Al Tereba wrote it then, Taka, but nowadays, it's Tereba Nitzkis, but we reach the time, Al Tereba right, that there'll come a time that it won't hold, because it's holding back the Gula, that means that we have to remove that, and maybe the Gula will not be held back. So the Gula is not held back because of these Inyanim, this Inyan, that Inyan, but there's no doubt that this has to be done, done with the Prat of Kabbalah's name of Yitzhakain. All the Inyanim that we well accomplished if it's obviously throw the Rebbe says not ma'akil. Chuva is not ma'akil. Doesn't mean that the Rebbe says that no more that means a shtus the thing that the Rebbe is saying no more chuva, no more obviously throw. It's not ma'akil anymore. There's no no one can come along and say that there's something that's ma'akil the gula. There's nothing that's ma'akil. We don't know what's ma'akil, to be honest. If anything it's Kabbalah's name Mashiach. So as a prat in Kabbalah's name Mashiach, one can come and can do it, especially to Indian of Sur. It's something to to uh, to not do. And and uh, and um, the fact that this is connected to Kabbalah's name of Shiach, right in Yosho, because directly, because what's Kabbalah's name of Shiach? Focus. You have to focus yourself on Pnei Mashiach to Keno. I mean, doing all different in Yonim, and then when you hear about Mashiach, you say, oh, why not? It's nice. Why shouldn't he come? Why not? I'll be happy that he comes. The Rebbe know the Havi Lameis of Mashiach. Kabbalah's name of Shiach to Keno means to focus and constantly be a in Mashiach. So this is also an Indian of Kabbalah's Pnei. Shechinah Kabbalah's name of Shiach, it's the same idea. When a person, Chas V'Sholem, is, is a Faretzach, a Mitten Davin, and Andre Yonim, even if they're good things, but it's not, it's, that's not the union of Kabbalah's Pnei Shechinah. It's Poshet Hepech HaSeichel, that when, 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 uh, when, 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 uh, when, 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 when,
But the, the fairest and Indian of, of uh, everything could be connected to Gavos and Mashiach and the Haitha Ketanya. And just to end off with the Rambam of today, that <laughs> the Rambam writes the Indian of Zayn Tsugabun, the Chashvur, the Chaneder. Today is a Chasim of Yam Yom, a Chasim of Tanya, a of Rambam, the Chashvurs. So, Taka, we have to do, we have to, nowadays we have to say Beli Neder. But you know, they have heard the expression, it's Taka Chasim of Beng, but I don't want to say it, but the, the word that, uh, my Zayda says, uh, uh, saying, uh, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. You know, you ever heard the word? Ken Zogan say? Koshen Tachis is like saying, I'll try my best. When a person has to do an Indian, and he says, I'll try my best, it's like, so in Hebrew, it's called Beli <laughs> In Hebrew, when, it's, when a guy tells you, I'll come, I'll do this Beli it's like saying, I'll try my best in, in Yiddish. <laughs> but... This, I, whenever I, I deal sometimes with Israelis and they tell me, I tell them, you do this, you do that, just blin I don't blin it, I can't blin it law. <laughs> Depends on blin So blin is only because the Rebbe once like he gave an answer when I was in Bochum 70, there's a whole group of Hebrew that were doing, a whole plan of doing Yonim, Gansa, they wrote to the Rebbe, Gansa and Yonim. And the Rebbe wrote, Re'elu kutatayra chesem roshe hamatas. Ashe, she has a line blin edda. But then the Rebbe explains why nowadays you have to say blin But we forbindzich and aifim, we're forbunden, it's not forbindzich. We're already forbunden to the Rebbe. And aifim of neder, and aifim of shvua, but we don't say it, because we have to hit in tavort. And oise eila says the Rambam, lo yimit lo eilam, lo yitin lo moit la tzadik. The person is forbunden with the Rebbe, and aifim shal neder of shvua, and he just doesn't say the word neder, but he's be'etzam it like a neder, mizzugabun. Why does a person make a neder? Because he wants to tie himself. So you have to be tied in the even of neder and shvua and oise elam leimet leilam, what's holding us is our akshonus of being tied to the Rebbe by his kashrus. And emes his kashrus means not only doing what the Rebbe wants, but living the Rebbe, like uh, one of the speakers before said about uh, uh, maybe it was Lando, but but atzmi. A person has to be has to be connected to the Rebbe. It shouldn't be because because he likes the Rebbe. It's because he and one, the Rebbe is one Matthias. And the Mele, like the Rebbe, the Rebbe explains in Tanya, there's an Eifan of Abbas Hashem, where it's you, you're loving, it's, it's Nafshi, if you see her, it's yourself. We have to be for Bunim the Rebbe, and the Mele will celebrate you to Skislev of Tov Shem Samach Vav, Chag, Resh Hashanah, Legula, Amitis, Vashlema, take you from the Yad, Mama, Shna, Yechia, Dineinu, Mereinu, Rabbeinu, Melech, HaMashiach, Leilam, Voyed. Und ich muss sagen, wenn er sagt, wegen Malke Meschliche, er sagt doch, ich hier mehr, das ist bloß die, ich hier mehr, das sind nicht nur die Werte, wir haben gesagt, früher der Teufel nach Hause, wo ist der Teufel nach Hause, wo ist der Teufel nach Hause, aber es ist mein Kabel auf sich, wie gewinnt der Hose in Malchus Dovid, Malchus Schleume, aber es ist mein Kabel auf sich, sein Malchus als Melech Meschliach. Ich sage, mit Fragen jeder einer, mit gehen zu jeder einer von, von dir, wo sei sie noch nicht, wo sei nicht Deutscher, unfortunately. Und wir fragen, ihr will sein im Reben? Sohn. Believe me, jeder einer, so sein, der größte Linker, wenn wir auf das sein, will sein im Reben. Die Stockenscheile. Sollen sie gefinden, dem Reben sich es, sollen sie suchen, dem Reben sich es, Wer sie kennen mehr, bestimmte Menschen zu peilen, zu sein dem Reben bei einem Bosser. Wo sein die Kizu verraten und da will man auch immer schicken. Der Rebbe geht auf die, der Rebbe allein geht dem Rezept. Wer sie zu peilen, das Ei, jener lacht und jener so, der sagt, das Ei und ich schäme sich von meinen Kindern, ich schäme sich von meinen Eltern. Das ist nicht egal, du, du willst doch sein dem Reben. Jetzt guck rein, die Sicherheit, was du willst und was du tun. Das ist eine paar Sache. Schlaf fragt man Kaschis von dem Rambam her und dahin. Es entstehen noch auf einen kleinen Kude, was äh, auf dem Gufa, was man geht es bei ihm, ist Menschen um Teines. Noch gibt es Tamus, was es auch meistens noch die Folie mit Roschen und die Folie nachher und dahin. Und Menschen gehen Teines. Aber wo sind die gewesen, Fahr Gimmel Tamus? Aber was hat er nicht gesagt, Fahr Gimmel Tamus? Am Schirr kennt Kummer in der Samen weg. 
מנוזם מן איפון בנור ג' תמוז, איצה זה אינטר גיבורים חכומים, איתר אמפר איזה גור פושט. דמיש רבינו עוד ימוס ליידר צו ברכן דה לוכס, עוד רבי של הגיאם לוכס שניאס, עוד אנוכי תפון דה לוכס שניאס, היא גורמת כפליים לתושיו. ניש נור סתם עשר עשר דיברס, נור חמישה חום שטר, עוד אנוכי גיבורים נביאים, היא גורמת כפליים לתושיו, אסף תירא. איזה רחמון אל אסלאם, הסיבות גבן אינר, פאר דבוס מוצא ברוכן דה לוכס, ווס ווס דוך שווה, שבירס הלוכס, צו דעניונים, הקופונים מעין גימל תמוז, איזה אינר את זוג, מפאר שבירס הלוכס, ירבה איזבוס. אפילו אז, רבי שתג גם שלו לוכס דוך מוישה רבינו, אפילו אז דברון צו ברכן, וכמה גפילו נמי לדווקא אין לוכס שניאס. אז אמרי שזה אפיקרס. אבל נוח דם עושה גבי משפירה סלוכס, גיפית מן עושה כפליים נטושייה. וזה בדרך כלל איסר, אז אמרי שאת מה שחשבי נספה גימל תמוז, גיפית מן זויאר, עם פרשת זכוכס, עשי שטייט, אז משיח את קומן האיפון, ועושה פונקט הזה ועושה גבי גימל תמוז. אז זה קום משיח, אז יש שטייט מזויאר. המטרד מגני הפה גימל תמוז, זה מפרשת אפיקרס, פבוס, אי שטייט אוכל זין זייר. או פרדוס על שתי תנזייה, כי נזכה עם ברל נפה, אנדר איפה נפה, איתו לא איפה נפה, איפה שתי תוך משנים דניונים, או בר עשי גוון עזה זך, כן מתוך נשמעה למזיין פונדמוס על שתי ת. כי במילא לא מרמז בזין, הלא חן רמב"ם, מתוסמך נזייר בקיצר, ותן לחוכם ויח כמוהיד, ועל יד אמנות פוסק שתי תו, פילך נשבק בהם, דרא אירח פסי קומן, ורד ארוויל, ודרא אילון ורד. דרמה מזוג תן עונה בפום פרק י"א מלכס מלוכים. המלך המשיח אוסיד למויד ולאחזיר מלכוס דוד ליושנו לממשלו הראשונו. כן זה היה זכר בשנים גזוג דור מול אף האנדר איפנובר דרזך מוזמן גידנקן. המלך המשיח אוסיד למויד ולאחזיר מלכוס דוד ליושנו לממשלו הראשונו. ובואי נעמיג לזה שהוא מקווץ נדחי ישראל. בואו זה פשט המלך המשיח אוסיד למויד ועוד אף אשטיין. דרמה עוד יקרן זוג, המלך המשיח אוסיד לאחזי מלכוס דוביד. ועושה המלך המשיח אוסיד למויד, ועוד אף אשטיין. הוא נבוא איתו מוקר פונם רמב״ם, המשיח דף שטיין. נורבוס, אז אבי תגמור לזוגת. המשיח עבר את אונגרוף בר נפלה. אז זה זה נפל. ביום ההוא אוקי מסוג אז דוביד הנפלס. עם משיח הליין, עבר את אונגרוף בר נפלה. הוא דרמל במזוגת, אבו עושה את הפשט. המשיח עבר את אונגרוף בר נפלה. ועל סי זין דרינים פונסוק אס דובי דוסיס דנוסי הדור מבייס דובי דוסי דו ידר דור נורדם ועל סי זויס מלכוס דובי ופועל דוסי בייס דובי ונסי גבן שלוימי ורחוב ומודדיה לפרצן מלוכים פום מלכוס דובי ידנוך ידו בזמן הגולוס דובי מלך ישראל חי וקיום ביעזי ועל ידר דור ידו נוסי הדור מבייס דובי נישקי מלך נורא סוקה סוקה שרי עובר פרדם ועוס משיח קום ואת זין סוכה סדובי דני פלס, אז אפילו, אז איזה דבר מלבים, אבל הם פוסיק, אז אפילו מלכוס דובי, אפילו סוכה סדובי, דרנוסי הדור, מבי סדובי, וזין אבן פונה פילה. זוג דרעי בית רצים הצדק, אבל הם פוסיק, אין עמוס טס, אבו זדו פשט סוכה סדובי דני פלס, אז מלך המשיח פר דיס גלוס, ואת זין אין האבן, שאין בו רוח חיים, ואת רצים הצדק מזמד יש ניתו דה אמס אוטון שכן רוח חיים. נורא זה ויורח, ואז מזאת נשדליכט בשעה זה ארקרי דה גנצר ייחוד שימי של סיארו, תסבור בחוידש, זטמן, פבוס, ולרז וייט פונט דה שמש. או בדווקא ראש חוידש זטמן איש דה יורח, פבוס, ולרז זה אינו נוצר דה שמש, ודה גנצר פה נמזיין לכיוון השמש, ולצד החושוך, ולצד האוילום. מל זטמן איש דה יורח, זטמן איש דה לבונה. איזה זה איזה מושיח בזמן עשידו סוכה סדובי דני פלס. הוא דנוך, בוא סיבי עשה מושיח, אז ביוי מהו, ומשיח בארץ נסגלה, או כי מסוכה סדובי דני פלס, הדר נוסי הדור, ועושה גבם, בואי פונפילה, אין בלי אופשטיין, או כי מידוס דמו כפור רמב״ם. המלך המשיח הוא עשית לאמויד, עשית ורן אויס נפילה, היא נוסי הדור. הוא דנוך ותברנגן, מה זה, מלכוס דובי דיו ישנו. לממשול הראשונו, בואו נשאל לממשול הראשונו. זה המון לא שני רמב״ם, ממשול הראשונו, ועושה פוסיק. 
כמו זה למשל הראשונו, נית ומכם מיינן אדרבה את אופשטיין ונסגה לברן וזיינה גילוי פון לובביץ' הרבה, סוכס דוביד, נוסי הדור, דוסי זין זיכר, אבל סך מר, לממשול הראשון הוא בסגבי מלכוס דוביד, ליושנו, מחזיר מלכוס דוביד, ליושנו, ניש מסגבי מזמן הגולס, דובי מלך יסחול חי וקיים על צנות נוסי הדור, לא לממשול הראשון הוא על צמלך מביס דוביד, דוביד מלכי משיחה, דוסו כדי רמב״ם, אם במילא זטמן, הדיאמון אפון לובביץ', במידה וזכר משמן, ומכן דוס מלכי זה ידר ראינו, ומכן בווייזן דם רמב״ם, ודוס דיאמון אפון לובביץ'. איך הוגעת הזה איתנו לבא שולם, דוי דו איתנו בסום עם קנט, אז גייסן רב זליק סלונים. מימה מספוטר, הרג בן אמית על רמס האייניקל, ונרג בן הבן בייס, מאויך לשולחון אוי פון דרב הרשב, פון שנס תוף ריש עין בייז, בייז עין וווב, בייז דרב הרשב וגפורון אירוס דוב. עוד רג גייסן דיטג, דיבוך מרג גייסן טג במשפוחס, ונרו די גייסן מתמרם רשב צוזמן עם טיש. ומגוון מקושס ומרם רשע בכל נפשוי. דנוך זה גוון המקושס ופרידי כרבה. ודנוך יוד שבא תוף שני יוד, וזה שנרו מגיינץ ומכתים זין כסבס קשס קודם רבם. ובהם דמרם סבור תגוון, יחידי תרקום אפון רבם, או תר... יגזסן לב מי, מגוון הקלן אינגל, יגזסן דורטון לגוון האיטנינג, שיקו חב"ד ירושלים, וחיים שלמה רוזנברג, אבל למשל, ראש השיב ואינטר הסמס. ומזל די חזר תבור תפון רבם. אדר רב עוד גזוקט, יגדם כוסה עד היום, אדר רב עוד גזוקט, אדר רב במערש, ידר רב עוד גאט, מימורים בסוד, אי בגיחה זה תפור מול, לתאי רסו האוויר. אדר רב במערש, אדר סגוון למים ומיקו מוי חוטו כוש חוף טס, בסוד גיחה זה מפעם לפעם לתאי רסו האוויר. אם איזה יותר זגיזוקט, יותר גבעיינט. פרגי חמצאי דבוס ואינסטו. יגדם עזר בעל רגש, אי בגזוקט אבות, בסוד גאט פון רב, איזה רגנסון עוד סוף הלורם. איזה בגבות עושה יחדוס, איזה נשוק חב"ד, דורסן בוינן עשה חליט ושאיד. ומזה דורתה לימון, איך בגבל האינגריד ממש פון פינה פיורט, אומר גייסן זוג מבריקס המוזן, או רחמון, איבו בורס, אדנינו מורנו רבנו ושייח צדקנו. דורס יגבל, איך רצו, איך בגבל, טוב שני תסבוב, טוב שני תזין, יאני יורון, ועוסקן אורתו משגרת בגבל משיח. ואומר גבל האלתר החוסיד, אותו מגייסן זוג מירמן שווסטר אורחמון ובורס על עיני מורנו ורבנו משה על צדקנו. הוא נזף לו תרד מרבים. איזקו מן העיד, הכווין לזוג נמנו מן ההייטיזר פונדיגורט פונדיגדוילים פונדילית פושה. הוא נזר, הרגוון זיר בידית עצמא איזה נורת משתם, וכשתר כמעריך גיבן. הוא נזר עין צוי המשטוב, איכו גישטיין דר בייל, ערב שבס. הוא נזוג תם רב זליג, איכו גיאת על זירזוג תת אלובביץ' הרב איז משיח. הוא נרקימה כחליש בזוג דיוורטר. עוד מה דרי בייז משיח צדקנו, אם לא יהיה למאי לו מזה, אם לא יהיה למאי לו מזה, יהיה נותן גם שתיים, למאי, אוי, אוי, למאי לו מזה, אוי, ראש כנס הזה, למאי לו מזה. ובכלל, לבא בית של רבייז למאי לו פה משיח, הדרי בייז נסגר לעצמו שיח משיח, ידוס הירידר, דפו נפיר דיבלס, זה הגנצי מייסה. אז זה גזור, משיח צדקנו, אם לא יהיה למאי לו מזה. אז זה גבל נהל תרחסיד עם המול, ועושים לזכות נשגי שם פונקן על איש. הוא דיאמון ובזום גאט, הוא מזה גזוק בגילוי. הוא מתמסה עם זין, סגוון דה נבואי פון דיווסר. ועוד הפליטי כרבה זוק מפיירש, הדוסי דה לצטר שלב, פר פאדי גולה מיטיס והשלימה. הוא מדוס ניש מייפיץ גינו גובר. הוא רגזה מרדי כזך, הוא מוסיקם עוד כמעט נשגוון עבדו ולט. הוא נהנה לנוך דה אנדרי, ועוד וסר זה מציף גנצי שטט. ועוד הפליטי כרבה אותו סמנה בגוון גזוק, הדוסי דה לצטר סימן פעל דיגול אמיתי סביבה שלימה. איזה תמנה פה זה חלומי של מי נוי מים. מיתון עם פריאר, בייס הלחמי, דוביד בייס הלחמי, דבורת לחמי, עוד כן זכרה לאויסס פון רבן. מ' ידום רמס נומן, י' ידום פרידי כרבה, ל' ידום י' ידום רמס טטה, ומ'חס ידום רמס ממה. ומ'חס מ' איזה ידום רמס רבצן. אז איך את חלומי של מים ומים, דיבורת חלומי, שעות נזיך על אויסיאס, פונדה רבה, מלך המשיח, פונדה רבצן, פונדה מטטון פונדה רבן, פונדה מאמן פונדה רבן, 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 פונדה
wenn nicht will, dann sehe ich bequem. Und die wir sind da, wenn wir gedenken, aber in der Schluss von Rebbe Chaim Yitzchok, wo sie kommt schon gesagt, dass der Meister Tanet oder der Rose, was ich weiß, es kommt doch jetzt der Chanike, steht doch mit Neusser Kankanim, nach seinem Nest lasst ihr Schanim, so drei bis drei Stunden, also während seinem Nest lasst ihr Schanim, während euch so Schano, und wie ich gedacht habe, jetzt eine Maske sein, was keiner ist, eine Maske dabei, Rebbe Chaim Yitzchok, ich denke, kommt dem Magressen aus der Koyach, aber er hat zwei Helfer, Teile, Teile, da ihr Kinder lacht, zwei Janker lacht. Und da soll man nicht davon bocken, sagt mit Geld, das ist einer größer Millionär und kein bringen Moschiach easy. Zeit gesund. and I'm sure most of you have been waiting for is the Chosh of a keynote speaker Rav Scholenberg Kalmanson Shliach of the Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach in South Southern Ohio Cincinnati Befrat come Mamish Moise Nefesh on each and every year is another story this year is not without its uh, my difficulties in coming here to be Mahana the Oilam with his Divrei Brocha Vechizu. As you know, one of the Shluchim who were here earlier, we were talking on Shabbos, mentioned that how does one know a simon of that what one's doing is a good thing is whenever there are challenges, whenever there are Kuvim. And we have got more than most. And, uh, the Samach man plays big time. Baboch Hashem Dito Notzach, and we're privileged, and it's our pleasure to invite Rabbi Kalmanson to address us this evening. Rabbi Kalmanson. Chaim, Chaim. We're talking about Yutas Kislev. There's a famous story that there was a chosid of the Alter Rebbe who would love to spend most of his time in the presence of the Alter Rebbe. And when he would go, he would stay there for months on end. His wife and family got used to that kind of a conduct, and without any choice, they had to agree to him spending most of the time in the presence of the Alter Rebbe. However, one year came around, and it was the month of Elul, and his wife asked him for a favor. Please, this year, spend Rosh Hashanah, the high holidays, with us. And he promised her that this year he was going to make an exception, and month of Tishri he's going to be home. As the month of Tishri neared, she gave him a list of things to go shopping in the store, milk, eggs, vegetables, fruit, for the house. And he went out to shop. As he was out on the road to shop, he noticed a caravan of chassidim traveling to the Alter Rebbe. He couldn't resist that. Everybody's going to go and he's going to stay home. Sure enough, he jumped onto the wagon and he left. When he didn't come home, his wife didn't call the police for a uh, lost persons search, 
but she understood what happened, and he traveled to the Alter Rebbe. Rosh Hashanah went by, Yom Kippur went by, Sukkot went by, Hanukkah went by, Purim went by, and finally it's approaching Pesach, and he decided he has to go back home. So he comes back home, and as he entered his city, he remembered that his wife sent him shopping. So he pulled out the list out of his pocket, went to the store, he bought the milk, he bought the eggs, he bought the, everything that she asked him to buy, more or less. And he comes with bag loads of things while his wife was working already for months, cleaning the house for Pesach. And he opens up the door, and as he crosses the doorpost, he trips, and everything went flying. The milk, the eggs, everything, and the whole house became dirty horrendously. And his wife starts screaming to him, not enough that you walked away on me now for the last six months. Now you're going to mess me up the house too? And his response was, take a look what happens when you rush. <laughs> I tried rushing on Thursday to the airport to get here because there was a debate going on between Rabbi Cohen <coughs> and members of the Marble Art Shul where to spend Shabbos. So the Rebish to help me, I ended up spending it in an airport in Cincinnati. So many times this afternoon this happened. You get people give you various eights what you should or you shouldn't speak. Should you say, should you not say? A lot of times you come to certain places and you hear the expression that this may be too heavy for people, this may be too, too good for people, it's below the head, above the head, which it always reminded me of the famous story of a speaker who was invited by a community to come and speak. <coughs> and the president of this congregation who invited the speaker didn't have the faintest notion who the speaker was. He just heard a name and he understood that he was supposed to be some great fellow, so he invited him. But when the speaker arrived to the shul and he takes a look, Sayyid Mitabod and Payas, and he really looked like a chassidah he got a little bit nervous, what is he going to talk about? So he asked him before the speech, he says, tell me, what are you going to talk about? And he said, uh, he's going to talk about Shabbos. He says, you know, Rabbi, in this shul, not everybody shame a Shabbos. You have to be a little bit careful, you've got to be sensitive, don't step on anyone's toes, please don't speak about it. All right, Let's speak about intermarriage. Well, you got to be a little bit careful into marriage. Who knows what can happen? Some people are intermarried. Away. It's not so simple. You're going to hurt some people. Please don't speak about it. Okay? Speak about kashas. Well, you know, not everybody exactly keeps kashas over here. And he kept on going on and on and on. And finally, the speaker loses himself and he says, You know what? So you tell me what to speak about. And the president said, Something Jewish. So, something Jewish. In Marble Arch, the, 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 yesterday, the theme was Kabbalah for Dummies. A new, a new style today when you want to speak about something, everything is for dummies. Computers for dummies, this for dummies, Kabbalah for dummies. <coughs> and somebody made an observation here today that usually I come on Friday and I sit quiet the whole time and I'm, I'm following what's going on and then I have what to speak about at the closing session, if you want to use those terms in modern, te in modern terminology. But today this guy said, <laughs> you weren't here a whole weekend, you're probably not going to have what to talk about. So therefore I decided I was going to try to talk about Mashiach for dummies. Simple to the point, no goy salam this, I'm a simple person, I'm not a big Talmud Chacham, I'll be the first one to tell it to you in public. I'm just a simple guy, I don't know of all these kunsen, I, I'm not, I can't go into the depths of things. But I think that if we talk simple things right down to earth, I think that maybe, hopefully, we'll walk away with something worthwhile in the, in the atmosphere of a Fabrenge. Today is Rosh Hashanah, as we mentioned before. Rosh Hashanah l'chassidus. But it's Rosh Hashanah. And just like we know that when it comes Rosh Hashanah, we have an obligation to make a chesh manefesh, so too today the most appropriate thing to do is to make a chesh manefesh of our activities in general, but specifically in regard to Mashiach, what we've done the previous year, 
and what are we going to continue to do as we leave here tonight? And if we make a chesm hanefesh, it has to be, as we know, a chesm hanefesh alibedinavsh. Not to fool ourselves, and not to walk out, as the Rebbe always said many a time, that we come to conventions, we get together, and we make hachlotas toivas, and then we go away as if nothing happened, and next year you come back and you make the same hachlotas again. Achlotus means that we're going to make a, a decision tonight to do something and literally to live up to this. And although I know that I'm standing over here and who am I to tell you what to do, but there's expression in Chassidus and Chassidim always used, Kabel es What do you care who I am? If it's truth and it's something that the Rebbe did say, then Kabel es please accept it. And by no sheer coincidence are we standing in a year where t Rosh Hashanah this year is pretty similar to the Rosh Hashanah when it actually happened, or Yutus Kislev when it actually happened. If I'm not mistaken, the way the story is told, that when was the Pidiyah, when did he receive the, the, the news that, he was go that the Alter Rebbe was going to be freed? When he said the Tilim Podavishalem Nafshi. Which day of the week do we say that, Kapitel Tillim? Same as this year. Today, in preparation for it, and by no sheer coincidence, those who say chitas <coughs> also said something today that applies to what we're talking about here tonight. And that is, we said today the Kapitel that speaks about Asher Chelfu Eivecho Hashem, Asher Chelfu Eikvus Meshichecho. I know that I may be repeating some stuff that you heard from me before, but you know something, every Pesach you say the same Haggadah, and you still come back next year and you say again the Haggadah. So Nishki Ferlach, if I'll repeat myself on some issues. The Rashab in Tofresh Samach Aleph made a statement about this Pesach, and the Rebbe repeated this. The Rebbe said, in Chayis, the Rebbe said that when the Rashab spoke about Tem Chetmimim, he said that Tem Chetmimim is going to have two periods of time. He was speaking about a hundred year period, and he said that there was going to be a two period time about Tem Chetmimim. There will be the first 50 years of Tem Chetmimim, which there is going to be the concept of Chel Fo Hashem. And then there's going to be a second period, another 50 years, in which there's going to be Chel Fu Ikvis Meshichecha. And the Rebbe in Shabbos Parshas Chayisore Tovshin Memhei, the Rebbe said that this was actually a Nevius of the Rashab. He said, Mela, the first 50 years that he knew there was going to be Chel Fu that it was going to be the Oivecha the Hashem. He understood, he knew that communism was in the making, and therefore there were going to be those within the Jewish segment of communism that perhaps are going to be fighting the concept of the Ebishter, which is, as we know, was the case. So the Rebbe says, Mele, that is something you can say even in the Chateva that he understood, and he saw it, and therefore he said it. But how did he know that the next 50 years, which in essence began in Tovshin Yud Aleph, was going to be the concept of Chel Fu Ikvis Mishichecha. So the Rebbe said that that was actually an Indian of Nevius of the Rashab to actually project that there was going to come a period of time when Jews are waiting in Golis for 2,000 years and Jews are saying every day, Ani Mami. And this becomes one of the 13 principles of faith different than any other mitzvah in the Torah. If you take a look in the Rambam, the Rambam says that if a person does an Avera, I have to defend him. The Rambam was a Lubavitcher. Somebody's not Shema Shabbos. Maybe he didn't learn in a yeshiva. Maybe he didn't do this. Maybe he didn't do that. And you have to find a defense on this person. And this is something that you see this person doing physically. He goes out in the street and he's Mechal Shabbos. However, the Rambam says that if a person <coughs> does not await the coming of Mashiach today, this is something that nobody else knows what he's thinking about. 
This is something that is his personal thoughts in his own mind. What does the Rambam label this individual? The Rambam labels this individual as a koifer, not only in the Hashem and in the Torah and in Moshe, but in the Nevi'im as well. This is something that we've been waiting for so many years. And this is such basic principle to Torah, then how can there be a Metzies that anybody should be careful? And the Rebbe says in that Sikha that we're not talking about some of the other people outside in the street that are going to be careful, but this is going to be people perhaps and put on two pairs of film, and these are going to be the ones to do so. Unfortunately, we've been seeing this. This Nevius, we could have done without. And as the Rebbe himself says, that when you talk about Nevius, Latoiva, that has to happen. But a Nevius in a negative fashion is loved after. We could have done away without it. But unfortunately, we see clearly what's going on. We see clearly that there are Jews with two pairs of film, with kapotes, with everything as the Rebbe described them, and they're still thinking to themselves, and not only to themselves, but actually going on in an aggressive fashion to deny and to fight and to go against and to put on the spot people who do believe by virtue of trying to be the Amalek, as you heard before, whether it's Suffolk or the Kiris, whatever it may be, but not only that, but to put them in a position that it It is no big kums that Hananya Mishol Vazari overcame the Nisyanis that they had, the Gemara says, but if they would have been tortured, and torture, the Rebbe points out many a time, doesn't mean physically that somebody's going to grab your arm and start ripping and twisting it, but torture can also mean financially. If a person is going to be tortured, maybe even people like Hananya Mishol Vazaria wouldn't be able to go through this Nisoyen. And we see how many korbonis we see today of those kind of anisyonis, of those kind of pressures, of people attempting to work off on others. Why do you believe? <coughs> it is interesting that right after Gimel Tamas, Yossel Gutnik was in Israel. And he ended up sitting at a chosh of a space by the Gerer Rebbe. And in the conversation between the two of them, Yossel Gutnik was sort of a little bit defensive about people believing the Rebbe's Mashiach. And the Gerer Rebbe asked him, Why, what's your problem? Why do you want to cool off Jews to the Indian of Emunah Bevia Samashir. And Yossel Gutnik, sort of feeling uncomfortable, said to the Gerer Rebbe, it, it's after Gimel Thomas. And the Gerer Rebbe told him, that by us, in Gerer Hoif, they knew that a tzaddik doesn't pass away. I, he says, I don't understand it, so be it. But that doesn't change the fact. And it doesn't take much because I just showed it to somebody this morning in conversation right here in Shul. There is a Zoyhar that makes it clear and states that when it says, Hokitsu veranenu shoich ofer, Ilu inon tzadikayu deloi masyun. This applies to tzadikim who do not pass away, who do not die, and therefore it has to say hokitsu because they're only sleeping. So they have to just wake up. I, we don't understand it, and to us and to our naked eyes it looks different. The whole world around us is one big optical illusion. It sounds funny, right? But it's not. We are all here. I don't know if there's a scientist in the room here. Is there a scientist here in the room? So you can verify or deny what I'm saying. Hi, Mitzvah is a scientist. He definitely knows how to perform miracles, that's for sure. But it seems to be that we're all sitting over here, and you're all paying attention to what I have to say, and we're all sitting calmly, right? According to science, we're not. According to science, we're twisting and turning so fast that you think you're sitting in one place. This is Porsche Begashmis. This is not 
It's not a Torah's lakshim. We the Rebbe Mol Gizok. This is not a Chomish Mumish. This is a Befeirish in New York Times. This is real. You're turning and twisting real fast, but because of the speed of it, you assume that you're sitting in one place. So your whole realistic world is not so realistic. So when we talk about the concept that the life of the tzaddik einom chayim besorim, that it says in the Zohar that ilu inon tzaddikaya doloi masya, this means something realistically speaking, because even scientific, we see that this holds true again also. Very simple. Anything that bears life in it, physical life, and then physical life ceases, what's the next thing that has to happen? Decay. No question about that. However, we all know that if you take a look at a true tzaddik, and if you go into the cave of a new tzaddik, of a tzaddik even years and years later, what do you find? A whole goof. We all know this happened by, well, let's, we, we can go back to the Rambam if you need to, but let's stick to our generation. We all know that this happened to the Rashab. There are people here who recall Rabbi Yoyna Edelkop and others who were the ones that were Zeichet, that when the Rashab's cave had to be moved from its location, that they were, there was a girl among Bochrim at the time of Yeshiva to dig out the grave, and when opened up, it was whole as if he was sleeping. 20 years. 20 years later. And I have to tell you that I happened to have been in Tzfas. With a smile yet. I happened to have been in Tzfas, and I told a group of non-from people this story, and a woman jumps up in the audience, and I said to myself, oh, there we go, somebody's going to deny it. This lady gets up and she says, I'm a Balash Tshuva. I come from Rostov. And I really got nervous. <laughs> she says, I want to tell you something. Before I became from, and before I became a Balash Tshuva, I knew of this story from the Goyim in Rostov. So now you know that Jews make up stories and they, embe em they embellish stories about a Goy that sailed the Memes, right? Goyim told her the story in Rostov before she became a Balash Tshuva. So obviously the story is true. If that is the case, how could that be scientifically that people who are living 20 years later are still smiling? Answer is, Chaye HaTzadik Einom Chayim Besorim, or as I just quoted the Zoyha, that that love in a mason. They're not, they don't die. The whole life is an optical illusion. And if this is the case, maybe it is time for us to sit down over here for a minute and make that Chayim Manafir. There's a famous story <clears throat> that somebody went into the forest one day. Now you guys are coming around to the holiday season or the vacation season, as we would call it in the States. And they went out into the fields. They went out into the forest to go, uh, to go uh, hunting. And this guy ended up this time in a forest that he was very unfamiliar with. And as the day progressed, he lost his way. And it started getting dark, and he couldn't get out of the forest. And as the day kept on moving down and started getting dark, he was getting more and more nervous, and he didn't know what to do with himself. So he just realized the reality of things, that he's not going to be able to get out of here tonight, and therefore sort of prepared for sleeping in the forest that evening. The next morning, he gets up, and he goes out, and he starts to search again, and to no avail. And a second day, he's stuck in the forest. And the third day, the same thing happens, but now he's already running out of food, he's running out of everything, and he's really getting edgy. As the day began to settle on the third day, he from a distance noticed some light. So he started following the light, figuring, oh, finally found somebody that knows the neighborhood, that lives here, and maybe that individual will help him out. As he approached the house where the light was coming from, he knocks on the door, he goes in, meets a very hospitable individual, and he asks him, tell me, you know, I got lost over here three days ago, I'm running out of food, I don't know what to do, please help me to get out of here. And that individual turns back to him and he says, I have to tell you the truth also. I too got lost in this forest. How to get out of here, I really don't know. 
but I can tell you what streets to take, not which ones not to take. That I could tell you. Again, as I said earlier, I'm not the great scholar that's going to tell you what you should do, but I definitely will try to tell you what you shouldn't do. The Gemara says that Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi wanted to meet Mashiach. The Gemara that everybody knows. So he went to Eliyahu Hanavi and he asked him, <coughs> how do I find Mashiach? And Eliyahu Hanavi gave him a description where to go and he told him basically that he's a pischi de Romi. He's at the gates of Rome. And he asked him, if I come there at the gates of Rome, how am I going to know that this is the individual? I mean, there's there are a lot of people around there in the gates of Rome. He has a special streimel. I mean, what, how am I going to identify him? So again, Eliyahu Hanavi gives him the identification and he points out to him that there are the other papas that are sitting over there and he's going to be among them. The other ones change their, their dressings of their, of their uh, bandages uh, one by one. He, I mean, all together and take the one off and then put the next one on. But he does them one by one because in case he gets the order for revelation for his gallows, he doesn't want to waste and keep Jews and gallows for one extra second. So he goes, Apischa de Remi, the Gemara says. He looks him up, and sure enough, he identifies him. And he walks over to him, and the Gemara says, he asks him, Eimosai Kaosimar. When is the master coming? And Mashiach answers him, Hayoim. Wow. To be sure, Belevi gets very excited. Hayoim. And he gets very excited. He's looking forward to this, his galas today. I need not tell you that they came and went. <coughs> and Rabbi Yeshua believe he's disappointed. He comes back to Eliyahu Hanovi and he tells him that this guy whom you identified is basically not telling the truth. And Eliyahu Hanovi tells him that you got excited a little too fast and you didn't really listen to the entire statement he told you. He basically said to you, Hayoim v'cholu, today, etc. And the etc. is the known verse that we recite, Hayoim im b'koy lo he basically told him he would hearken to him today. It could happen right now, this minute. This is not something that is down the pipe. But since you didn't have the gedold and you didn't listen to the whole thing, you got a little bit mixed up. That's why you're nervous. As if Mashiach is such basic principle in Yiddishkeit and such great thing, how come between Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi and the Rambam, there's very little written about Mashiach? Here and there, scattered, but very little written about Mashiach. It is only the Rambam that brings him back to the forefront and discusses it at great length, and La Halacha, and as we all know, that if the Rambam says something and paskin something and there's nobody that argues with him, this is the Halacha. And as we all know, for those who study the Rambam, that the Rambam had an interesting rival, that if he said day, the other guy had to say no, night. The Raven, we all know that, that he didn't let him get away with anything. The only place he doesn't argue with him is in Hilchas Mashiach. In these matters, when he discusses this, he doesn't argue with him. So for sure, Haloche Kemoisei. But in between time of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, until the Rambam, you really have to go search for it. What happened? Some colleagues over here before said that they had some boyichs for us and they weren't talking exactly necessarily the Rebbe's for us. You know, you have a dress of boy for a halam and tzizam, so I can also say a boy for I saw in a funny sefer somewhere that a yoim was a hint. We know it says, Elif shoni b'yinecha ke yoim esmoil. So when he told him a yoim, he was basically hinting to him that if everything was going to go according to schedule, we're not talking about zochu, but if things go according to schedule, it's not going to happen for the next thousand years. So b'mei, like, keep it cool a little bit. So rather than making this whole big issue all along, and obviously Torah trusted, the Gemara trusted, the Chachamim trusted, that Jews were going to believe in the basic fundamentals of Judaism anyway, there was no need to make this whole kasha. But as the thousand years was beginning to, to near to an end, the Rambam says, how are we going to know who this is? How are we going to identify this individual? And therefore brought this back and started talking about Mashiach in a very, very factual and in a very realistic, tangible fashion. However, the Rambam came and went, and nothing happened. Here comes the Balshemtiv. And the Balshemtiv says that the thousand years is basically operating. 
And if this is the case, why has he not come yet? Where are we going wrong? And the Baal Shem Tov tells himself that he went up, he ascended to Heichel HaMashiach, to the chamber of Mashiach, and he asks him, E Mosai Ka'osimar, when are you coming? Same language as Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, nothing different. And what does Mashiach answer him? Why didn't he tell him the same thing? Because at this point, there's no thousand years to talk about. At this, at this point, there's something that we have to act and act now. And he didn't tell him because at that point, if the Baal Shem Tev would have gone away in a Litvish yeshiva and he would have t taught them chsidis, Mashiach wouldn't come. That was not the answer. That was not the answer to the problem. The answer to the problem was What does that mean? We read in the Torah, we just finished reading it the last few weeks, several times. The Torah tells us about Avram Avinu and about Yitzchak Avinu and they were using Mayonis and they were digging Be'eris and they were digging and they were coming and they gave it names. There was a whole long repeat of what was going on during that period of time. <clears throat> Why does the Torah tell us the detail? Because the Torah tells us you should know that there are two forms of Jews. There's a Jew who is likened to waters of a river, of the ocean, water that's accessible, a lake. They're available. In other words, when you see that Jew, you see Ayid, Metabekeshe, Metashtaimu, with long payas, with tzitzis. You can tell he's a Jew. He was born, how do they say it today, FFB, from by birth. You could see it right away. However, similar to the lake, similar to the river, similar to the ocean, the water is always accessible, but it can become contaminated from his surroundings. However, there's one more form of water, and that's subterrane water. Water that's under the ground, you don't see it, you don't know, you walk on it, you step on it, you have to dig to look for it. And if anybody knows, people would realize that subterrane waters are so powerful that if it runs under your basement, it can actually burst right through the foundation of your house. That's how powerful it is. And when you start digging for it, like Avram and Yitzchak did, the water comes bursting up with such tremendous power that it can take and literally injure people. And that is the second element of Jews. People in our generation, when you walk in the street and you don't know who they are, and you can't even recognize sometimes whether or not they're Jewish, however, Mashiach told the Baal Shem Tov, if you are going to dig under those Jews and you are going to do what it takes to find the well that's in it, I guarantee you at that moment that you're going to bring out that Nekudas Hayahadus of each and one, every one of them, and they will be the ones, once they return, for the Hisgalus of Mashiach. The Baal Shem Tov takes this very serious and feels that something has to be done. But the manifestation of the Baal Shem Tov's seriousness was picked up only by the Alter Rebbe. And as the Rebbe points out that the reason when we talk about Mashiach, why does Lubavitch have the patent, if you will, on Mashiach, and why does Lubavitch have the patent on the Nosi Hadoyer? The Rebbe explains this, not me. Why does Lubavitch have the patent on the Nosi Hadoyer? Because they were the ones that took the torch of what the Baal Shem Tov was told by Mashiach, and they ran with this torch each in his own way, beginning with Yutas Kislev, began to find a way to dig in to the hearts and into the wells of these people. <laughs> Every Nosi from the Alter Rebbe on, and the Rebbe Bechlal says that it's all one. There's not a question that there's seven Nesim, it's all one. The Alter Rebbe and all right down from the Baal Shem Tevan till the Rebbe, it's all one. It's a manifestation of seven generations, but that's similar to the way it was in the beginning after the Chet Eitzadas when we had to have seven tzaddikim, seven, seven shepherds that had to bring Hashem back into the world. So we have the same thing repeating itself. History repeats itself even in the spiritual sense. Therefore, it has to manifest itself in this fashion. However, starting with the Alter Rebbe to each his own, began to seek and to look and to see how it takes to bring Mashiach closer. The Rashab obviously saw something that 
Now the time is ripe. The Rashab came along and he noticed that we have gone through the fact that we prepared Chassidus accessible to everybody, but now we are reaching a new plateau in life in which we have to turn this into a physical, tangible reality. And that's why the Rashab was the one to establish Tem Chitmimim. And as you all know, that when he established Tem Chitmimim and asked why another yeshiva, he answered that he is establishing the Chayoli Beis Dovid. What's the whole thing of Chayoli Beis Dovid? And we spoke about this before. Chayoli Beis Dovid were the individuals that when they went out to battle, they were the first suicide bombers, if you could use that expression in today's jargon. They were the first ones who knew that we're going out even if this is a suicide mission because they knew that if they're going and following the instruction of David HaMelech, this is what has to be done. And in order not to mess anyone else up in the process, Kaisiv get Ishti, which is not exactly a big uh, boost, a morale booster. When you go out to war, the chief of staff, the head of the army, your commander tries to boost your morale as best as possible. To tell somebody, Kaisiv get Ishti, basically you're telling him that you're going to die in the war. That's not exactly a big morale booster. However, since they knew the great task of what they were supposed to do, that that was the beginning of bringing a Likuzba Oilam in a fashion that this will lead to, as we read before, I'm going to differ a little bit with what was said before, the difference between Yechi Melech and Yechi Adenenu. In that same place where the Rebbe teaches us, we learn the text of Yechi Adenenu, you go back a few psukim earlier, and you'll see that Yechi Melech was said, and I was in the wrong person. <laughs> Although at that moment he was already dying, that is the, the injection, if you will, that you give for the security of the continuity, if you will, of the, 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 the base David, the Tzatzom of Beis David to bring Mashiach because since Mashiach was supposed to come through David HaMelech and through Shloime by the fact that he said Shloime Yimlech Tachti that is when we know with the security so now you can say whatever you want today oh, but at that point the Zogn Dem Vot Alein was not necessarily the, 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 the expression properly without saying the whole thing and I know there are many people who have a lot of tightness. many people scream okay you have to say Yechi but how many times a day do you have to say it? So say it three times a day. Say it two times a day. But why do you have to say it every 15 minutes? I'm going to try to act as a Talmud Chacham. Am I allowed to for a few minutes? The Rambam says in Hilchis Bikurim that when you brought the Bikurim, <coughs> you had to say every few minutes, Hareza Bikurim. Why do you have to say every few minutes, Hareza Bikurim? Say it in the beginning, or say it in the end, or say it in the middle sometimes. <coughs> Why do you have to say it every few minutes? The explanation is, min haminim. In other words, it would have been enough to say it once. It would have been enough to say it twice. But since they developed meaning deniers, that this means anything and that there's any significance to this whole procedure, therefore they have to say it virtually every few minutes. If people would not run around screaming that Yechi is something not to be said, you wouldn't have to say it a thousand times a day. Lahoitzi min haminim. But to go back <coughs> to this point, the, 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 Rashab said, <coughs> the Rashab said that he is establishing Chayol Lebez David. And if I can take this in brief and break this down, the Rashab basically established an armed forces and began recruiting soldiers. The Friedrich Rebbe, and the reason I'm going by this is because the Rebbe himself states that when we talk about Miyad, Miyad, the words Miyad now, the Rebbe speaks about Bnei Geila, the Reinu Zeh going backwards. We're talking about our generation, the previous generation, and the, and the Rashab generation. Therefore, I'm going to use these three here. The, the Friedrich Rebbe basically was the trainer. When you go out into an armed forces, you have to train the soldier how to deal with when you're on the battlefield. However, the Rebbe is the commander-in-chief who took these soldiers physically out to the battlefield. The concept of Yilchoi Milchemes Hashem, we see clearly by the Rebbe 1,000% in every expression. 
whether we talk about the tanks or we talk about the Mlechama and Mihu Yehudi, Shtochim, whatever subject matter you want to talk about, the concept of Yilchem, Milchem is Hashem, the Rebbe is the one that took us out into the battlefield, and the Rebbe is the commander in chief who is basically carrying us through this. So we notice that as we move down the pike to our generation, we see clearly that, at, starting with the Baal Shem Tev, who took serious what, uh, what uh, uh, Mashiach told him, and going down till the Rashab, who basically established the armed forces, because time has come that now we have to turn this into tangibility. And then the Friedrich Rebbe took it even more tangible by having the concept of Yafutza Meinasecha Chutza in every sense of the word. However, in the first 50 years still of Taim Chitmimim, and therefore, what was the battle at that time? was a Vecha Hashem. He was fighting communism. He was fighting all those Yevsektia who were trying to break yeshivas, mikvahs, shul, chadorim, and everything else that it took. And went to the extent, as we all know, that he actually had to call together several of his disciples and make a bond between them that we go l'chaim and to the hepech a mesiras nefesh to continue to make sure that Yiddishkeit flourishes. If not for the Friedrich Rebbe, this whole business of Russian jury wouldn't have been an issue today. It is an issue only thanks to the Friedrich Rebbe. However, as I said, as we move down, <coughs> and the Rebbe himself starts right from the beginning of the Nasius, and he says that Nobody should try to play with his own self in fantasy land and believe that the Rebbe is going to be schlepping the wagon and we're going to get a free ride. The Rebbe made it clearly, Kinderlach, we are ready to go out to battle. And you and me together are going to do it as we know throughout all the Miftzoyim. And finally came to a point where the Rebbe turns to us as a loving father to children and he says to us, that I have done everything I can do. There's no reason for me to be able to continue. I can't. I brought it to the point where Mashiach himself can bring it. That is the end of it. From here on in, Asu kol Why is that so? Can we do something more than the Rebbe can do? Are Chassidim stronger or more powerful than the Rebbe is? How can that be a thing like this? We receive our highest from the Rebbe. He's our head. How can we do something that he cannot do? How can he say, I've done everything, now it's your turn? The answer is, and I think I told it to you once before already, that the Netzach Yisro, the Maharal, who happens to be a great-grandfather of the Rebbe, happened to write some Svarim about Mashiach as well. One of them is the Netzach Yisro. And over there he writes clearly that Mashiach's revelation is ki time. Just like in Mitzrayim it was a 40 year process. The Jews were not totally free until they went into Atzisol. First they, they, they had the Egyptians after they left and then they had Amolik and then they had the, the Amoiri and then they had the other ones to fight. There was always something. They were not 100% free until they went into Atzisol 40 years later. So does he say will be in the Yemoisa Mashiach. That Mashiach is going to come and will go ahead and basically present his credentials for a 40-year period. And when the 40 years are up, he's not going to be able to do anything anymore. That's the end of his ability. From there on in, it is up for Kabbalah, Hamalchus, Ha'am. The nation is going to have to accept him as Melech HaMashiach in order to have the Hisgalas take place. And he writes, V'hadohu dechsiv hayoyim im bekoy lo yisishmo. Today, Mashiach will reveal himself. Today, tonight, not tomorrow. Tonight, Mashiach will reveal himself in Bekoilo Yisishmo, if you hearken, if you accept the Kabbalah Samalchus. So when the Rebbe came to 40 years and he said that, the Rebbe was not just trying to pull our legs. As you heard before, there is no such thing as Milsa of is there. This is serious talk. And if we don't take serious what we were told, Azochen Azveis Tun Zalaman, It's interesting that right after that, <coughs> the Netzach Yisrael adds that after 40-something years, Yisyasim Hadoyim. 
and only later will Mashiach reveal himself. People start asking, so why are you listening? How can you listen? What does it mean the Rebbe meant, the Rebbe tried, the Rebbe meant well? What does it mean that we have to go blindly? We have a posik in the Torah. That if a great person comes along, a novi comes along, a leader comes along, and he presents his credentials, the Torah says, Loisosur Yomin Usmoil. And as Rashi points out, Afilahu Oimalacha Yamin Shu Usmoil, well, Smoil Shu Yamin. He tells you that right is left and left is right, and you think that you're smarter, and you realize that you're not allowed to do this because it's not in accordance with Allah. Torah tells you that as long as he presented his credentials, you have to listen. What happened to Eliyahu Hanovi? We all know the story with Eliyahu Hanovi, with the Nevi'e Habal. We all know that here Eliyahu Hanovi is talking about bringing korbonus in Hara Carmel. It's not exactly something that was so easy to be done and allowed to be done so free, so simple. But since he was already an established individual, Leisosu Yomen Ismail, and therefore we have no choice. We have to follow everything that we're told by this Nosi Hadir, even if it's something that at least our mind tells us that it's not right. And we hear that. The world isn't ready. This guy is going to get turned off. This guy's going to this. This guy's going to that. Let me tell you something, and I'm not bragging of it, but I do travel around quite a bit, and I do speak to different kind of a crowds, from and not so from, and not so from, and even to Lubavitchers. And I found that if you stand up there and you tell the truth, it works. I don't see people getting turned off to this. The only time people get turned off is when you yourself have a doubt about what you're saying. That's when you're getting, because we see this in the world. For 50 years, there was a world out there looking to Chabad for, for guidance. Before the Six-Day War, what does the Rebbe have to say? Before the Yom Kippur War, what does the Rebbe have to say? Before the Gulf War, what does the Rebbe have to say? Everybody was always turning to look to Chabad for guidance. What happened to this? <clears throat> and I have to tell you that I heard in the street that they're saying that we're still looking to Chabad for guidance. But if you guys have problems among yourselves, what do you want from us? That is what I'm hearing in the street, which throws the achayas, the responsibility, on each and every one of us even more so than would have been under normal circumstances. We are all shluchim of the Rebbe, whether we like it or not. You don't have to be on a payroll of a shliach to be a shliach of the Rebbe. There are shluchim, just like in the armed forces. You have the Chel Hayam, you have the, the Chel Avir, you have the different departments in the army, so too does the Rebbe have different departments. There may be frontline soldiers who are on a payroll, maybe. But everyone, if he's living in today's generation, and if he's Mekusher a little stronger, a little bit less to the Rebbe, he is a Shliach of the Rebbe. And everything you do reflects on the Rebbe. You do one thing wrong, you say one thing wrong, you are reflecting the Rebbe, that the Rebbe said, God forbid, something wrong, or did something wrong. And this throws a tremendous responsibility upon us. And there's no way that we can go away with it. Is this crazy? Yes, it is. The Rebbe said clearly that the world knows I am crazy over Mashiach. The Rebbe's words, not mine. <clears throat> so this is not an issue of whether we understand what the Rebbe tells us. This is not an issue whether we think we're bigger chachomim than the Rebbe. This is a responsibility and an obligation that each and every one of us have to do the job. And if we have a problem with it, the Rebbe covered that too. This is one very interesting thing. If you learn the sikhs of Tavshin Nun Aleph and Tavshin Nun Beis, you will see that every question that you have, and I don't care what the question is, this guy asks the question, how come you say Kaddish? And this guy asks the question, how do you say Yechi? And the other guy asks the question, how do you say this? All these questions the Rebbe himself covered. You don't have to go far. But the one thing we see is that if we follow those instructions and we follow this in the place the way the Rebbe tells us, it happens. And the Rebbe told us that if there's a shliach outside, and I say again, a shliach as on, as on the payroll or a shliach as any individual who has a problem with the subject matter and doesn't know what to do with himself, the Rebbe says the following. If you can't handle it yourself, either because you didn't learn, because you're not familiar with the subject, or you push it uncomfortable with the subject, your mushpoyim are not at fault. Your constituents are not at fault. Bring out someone else that can explain it to them. 
There's no teret for not seeing the message of the Rebbe, Hinei Zem Moshiach Bo, in every corner of the world. And the Rebbe explains, Hinei Zem Moshiach Bo, not that he's on his way, and not that he's coming, but Bo Miloshin Ovar already came. Huh? Kvar Bo. That's the Rebbe's words. Again, it's not my words. And the Rebbe makes it clear, you have a problem, Get somebody else that can stand there and explain it and let the people know. Don't start with Terutzim that I am smarter than the Rebbe and I feel my community is not ready and I think therefore I'm going to do it my way and the other way. In the meantime, you're causing Agnes Nefesh to the Rebbe. You're causing Agnes Nefesh to Klaus Yisrael. You're causing Agnes Nefesh to the Shechina that has to sit and go us one extra second. You know the famous story with the Russian bear? The Russians had a, a show that they used to take around the world. <coughs> and the show basically was that they had a bear <coughs> that would fight and wrestle with a human being. And the kunz was that the bear was so well trained that he knew that the other guy was a human being. And they used to take it around and show it in theaters all over and big, in, big, in big places all over the world. At one point, this is still through the heat of communism, <coughs> The individual who was supposed to fight with a bear got sick. Sick so much that he couldn't travel. But the Russians are not going to stop shop because of that. So they immediately put in an ad in the Izvestia, Pravda, and the two papers, looking for somebody who wants to train for this task and go out and do this job. Ayidala read the ad and he thought to himself, wow. This is a golden opportunity to breathe fresh air, free air, and he accepted, he responded to the ad. He received the crash course, and on the way they go. He comes to his first stop, <coughs> and it's nearing the time. The circus, so to speak, is put together already. The crowd is there, it's packed. Everybody's cheering already, and the bear is marched out in the, into this big arena, he starts getting nervous. He starts getting butterflies in the stomach. I mean, after all, he did get some training, but it was only a crash course, and it's true that he's breathing fresh air and free air, but chances are that he'll have to be taken back in a little casket. So he started getting nervous and more nervous, but he couldn't get out of this. The Russians, we all know, were heartless. They grabbed him on both sides, and they started walking him down the aisle, while everybody was cheering, ready to go into the cage and to wrestle with the bear. The door opens up, he gets pushed in, the door gets closed behind him, and the bear starts coming at him. And he is nervous. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He knows that this is his final minutes of his life because he's not going to be able to survive this. And what does every Jew do? He puts his hand over his eyes and he screams, Shema Yisrael! Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echod, ready for death. And to his big amazement, the bear responds, Boruch Shem Kweid Malchus Eleilam Vod. The Rebbe taught us that regardless of what garb we wear, whether we wear a Shtaimo, whether we wear a Bekesha, whether we wear this form or the other form, it makes no difference. If we scream out loud enough, Shema Yisrael, we get a response. But I want to tell you a true story about this. You know, I come from Cincinnati, and I think I told you a few stories about Rabbi Silver, but I want to tell you one interesting story. <clears throat> after the war, after the Holocaust, many Jewish children ended up in Christian and in church convents. And you basically you saw him as of, of Goyim, <clears throat> mainly in France. They ended up in there. And Rabbonim, after the war, got together and felt that there were thousands and thousands of Jewish children that maybe are there, but we have to find them. They shouldn't get lost to Yiddishkeit. Rabbonim got together and Rabbi Silver Berushim, and they made a delegation to go to this particular convent, to this particular church, uh, Beis Yisoyimim, to try to save as many Jewish children as he can. And they came there. And they started talking to the administration that they want to have all the Jewish children back. At first, the administration was denying that they have Jews. 
But as they kept on pressuring them, they slowly but surely kept on admitting it to them, and finally they said, you know what? All right, we have some Jewish children here, but we don't know who they are. So if you want, you have 15 minutes to identify them, and whoever you can identify as Jewish children in that 15 minutes, you can take with you. The Rabotim had a tremendous dilemma here. To a certain extent, they were ready to agree right this minute because that was an opportunity to take Jews out, but how are they going to identify hundreds if not thousands of Jewish children in a 15-minute period? So they said, you know what, we're going to come back here tonight and we'll try to work this out. The Rabboni went away, sat down, had an emergency meeting among themselves, the delegation, and they came to the conclusion that they will come back that evening when the children are going to sleep. And they're all going to take another floor of this base Yisoyimim, and that's how they're going to get the children back. <clears throat> they came back at night, and all the children were already in bed. Each one of the Rabbonim took another floor, and as the children were ready to go to sleep, the Rabbonim were running up and down the hall, screaming, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu Hashem Echad. And hundreds and hundreds of little kindle started crying, Tate, Mame, Mame, Tate, because that brought them back to the memories of when their parents would put them to sleep saying Shema Yisrael and saved literally thousands of Jewish children within that 15 minute perimeter. The Rebbe told us quite clear and taught us and we've seen it and it's Bodhika Menusa. A Jew screams Shema Yisrael or a Jew asks another Jew to do something, Jews are going to do that. We only have one problem. We fall asleep on our jobs. And when I say fall asleep on a job, you know, you can say to me, what are you hacking in China? We're standing, we're working, we're going, we run to the banks, we, we try to keep the maizdas going, and we do everything that we can. <clears throat> but this again reminds me in a story that there was once a soldier whose task was to watch the castle of the Tsar, the case of, from Russia. Actually, the Rebbe told the story. And he was standing and watching it. It was a freezing winter night, and he was standing out there and watching the, the castle, and he started freezing. He started freezing. He couldn't stand at attention because he started to freeze. He started rubbing one foot against another one. His superior noticed it, walked over to him, and smacked him and reprimanded him, whatever he did over there to him, to give him over the head for doing this kind of a thing. Hash taste 11 case, so you have to be at attention. And the soldier starts crying back to his commander, and he says, what, what do you want from me? I'm standing over here already for so many hours, and it's freezing in the street. I'm freezing. I haven't done anything wrong. His commander answered him, the reason you started freezing is because you weren't thinking about the queso. If you would have been thinking about the queso, you wouldn't be freezing. If we would be thinking about the Rebbe 24-7, if we would follow the Rebbe's tears, the Rebbe's bakoshes, listen back to the sicha of Chav Nissen, in which the Rebbe screams and begs, Ani Asholi Asisi, Asu Kol Mashi B'Yechol if anybody listens to those words and does not respond, the posh doesn't have a heart. Live with those words. Live with those tears. Live with those bakoshes of the Rebbe to learn the Inyoni Mashiach HaGeula from the, Nos, from the Likutasichas of the Nosi Hadoi. You're not going to freeze if you do that. Guaranteed. <clears throat> there were great sages in the time of the Gemara that said that they didn't want to live in the Deir of Mashiach. Because they knew that in the Deir Yishol Mashiach there's going to be a lot of pain, a lot of agony, and they just wouldn't be able to handle it. They didn't want to live in that generation. However, we're here. And we're all living. We go to sleep at night. Nobody, nobody seems to have sleepless nights. There are Jews that are missing still in Iran when the Iranians took them away several years ago. Just out of plain Kobonis, 12 of them if I'm not making a mistake. We know that they only returned two. Where are the rest of them? Why are we sleeping? Iran Arad is lost so many years, we're still sleeping. Kids are getting killed every day. Parents are getting killed every day in Atis Hall because we have over there today the Mamshola that are giving up things and helping to make this terrorism worse, and we're sleeping. We can make a, once in a while we go ahead and we scream and we make a protest. But we still haven't lost any sleep or weight 
over this thing. Why? And if I'm not mistaken, the Rebbe himself said that the Rebishta gave this generation anesthesia. When you go through surgery, there's tremendous pain. Why does the patient on the table not feel it? Because he's given anesthesia. And therefore, he's frozen, he's paralyzed, he doesn't feel it. We have a little too much anesthesia in us, and we're letting this thing go, and we're not doing what we have to be doing. Let us loosen that anesthesia a little bit. Let us wake up from this freeze. Let us not allow ourselves to get frozen despite the fact that it's cold in the street and whatever else goes on over there. We have to make sure that we feel the pain and agony of the Nossi Hadoy. We feel the pain and agony of the Mashiach Shabadoy. Everybody says that the, the, the Rebbe is Nasi Dereinu. I don't know, as you said before, you heard expressions right, left, middle, basically where these guys are, what side they do stand or don't stand, but everybody uses the term. And the Rebbe himself said, Hanosi Hadoy, who Hamashiach Shabadoy. So what's the Shaila here? For who are we afraid? For who are we shamed of? For who are we uh, being fearful of telling the other the truth? Kemoy Shehi. We all know that the Rebbe told the story about Moshe Rabbeinu. When Moshe Rabbeinu is arguing with the Eibishter for seven days in a row, Moshe Rabbeinu is arguing, the Rebbe the Eibishter says, go, and Moshe says, I can't, and the Eibishter is answering. Seven days in a row, this argument goes on, and at the end, Moshe Rabbeinu has two questions to the Eibishter, or one question and one statement. We all know about the Shlach Nabi Yatishlach, but I want to stop on something else. He says, Eibishter, okay, I'm going. But what happens if they ask me, what's your name? What should I tell them? What is the Eibish to answer? He doesn't tell them his name is Yossel, Shmerel, Todos. He doesn't tell them a name. He just says, The Eibish to couldn't answer? What, Moshe Rabbeinu caught the Eibish to by, by you know, off, off guard? <coughs> the Rebbe explains that Eheye is Begematria 21. Eheye Asher Eheye is 21 times 21, and how much does that add up to? 441. And the Rebbe says that basically what the Eibishter was telling Moshe Rabbeinu, don't be politically correct, and and don't tell him this story and yet the story, and the willst oisnamen by the ganze Welt. Eheye Asher Eheye, tell them the truth, and vaya aminu. That will be the story. If you tell them Kemoshihi in the words of Nasi de Reino, in the words of the Rebbe, in the words of what the Rebbe wants us to tell, lay it on the table as is. And it will be Niskabel. That's not the question of whether people will take or people will not take. And a lot of people start saying, but how can I do it myself? I'm all alone. How can I do it myself? People around me are arguing. In my city, there are people that are anti and they're saying it's a gate, and I'm claiming I now look like an idiot. What, what can I do? <clears throat> to that, too, we can learn Lahavdul from Havaya Soilam Hazar. If we want something to work, we start what's called in the, in the public relations world as grassroots campaign. It takes one person to start. When they wanted to start a campaign to stop smoking, they started with one person and with two people, and now a half of the world tried that you shouldn't smoke in public and do these kind of things. It takes one person to start. Don't start with my salah that you're afraid that nobody's going to do and somebody's going to say, and maybe people are going to look at you as a weird person. You know something? If they look at you as a weird person, if the Rebbe can say, I am crazy over Mashiach, you also can be crazy over Mashiach. Nishke Felech. The Rebbe once said about the word Shev Val A lot of times people take an attitude that there is a concept of Shev Val If you have a doubt, it's after Gimel Tammuz, we don't know, we're not hearing, we don't hear the Rebbe's voice, we're not sure. Shev Val The Rebbe said that what Shev Val in this kind of a case means is that Tzas Hayetzer, in which he comes to people and he says, Shev, Zitz Alein, Val Taisa Lo and unfortunately, we see that too. If you feel you have a hard time and you can't do it, don't block the second guy of doing this whole thing. 
don't worry what's going to happen with somebody else. You just worry for Dan Klein Veltler and you'll be all right. <laughs> you know, Golda Meir once came to a visit here in the United States. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? There in the United States. Huh? There in the United States. There in the United States. I'm sorry, I'm from America. <laughs> And uh, Johnson was the president at the time. And as she was kibitzing around with him, at one point she says, I don't really need any big favors from America. All that I need is three generals, and I can handle the whole Middle East by myself. Johnson says, three generals, you can handle the whole, Amer the whole Middle East by yourself? She says, yeah, General Dynamics, General Electric, and General Motors. That's all she needs, three generals. The Rebbe begged and used this term that he doesn't need a whole world to take care of things. He could use ten people, he could use three people, he could use one person. As I the Rebbe because that was a high action, and he doesn't need thousands and thousands of people. If for some reason you are moved and touched by what the Rebbe tells you, even if you're the only general, as I said, Zogn is euch nicht gefährlich. And I think I once told you the story in Russia, like in the Chaum game, they used to take and, 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 uh, and uh, recruit people to the armed forces, and then they would go around in homes and knock on doors and see who tried to avoid and who tried to draft dodge. So they once came and said, sitzen a hoist zusammen, a whole mishpoche, with the kids and the grandparents, and sitzen an alter zwei, nein sicure kerit, with the rest of his children and the house and grandchildren, and a knock on the door happens. And everybody knew a knock on the door at that point was danger. <coughs> So everybody ran under the bed and under here and under the closets and my life to fight against this old man is Eichantlov. Sure enough, the soldiers came in to check if there's any draft dodgers over here. And they looked around, they didn't find anybody. When they all went out, the kids turned to the grandfather and says, Mela, we ran away. They're looking for soldiers. 18 years old, 20 years old, 23 years old, 25 years old. Mazucht soldaten. You're 92 years old, you're afraid? He says, Um, can general and daffen mich? The rabbit doesn't care if you're a general or not. Just be a soldier, even if you're the only one, will be able to handle that too. So dying good, just make sure that you do what you said, and the Rebbe said clearly that even if it's only one enough, that will also handle it. And by looking around and seeing what others are doing and getting a chlishis, I was standing here today, I was here today in the morning when I arrived. And I'm standing over here today, and I young a man who I believe is a Tmimiz de Kayit is asking me if all this is true, and all this is what the Rebbe said, and this is after showing him a sikha, showing him another sikha, and not another sikha, if all this is true, how could there be that there's so many anoshim chashuvim that he knows that feel otherwise? This is like pouring a, a bucket of cold water down the throat of somebody that would have done on his own, should have he only known that this is it, there's only one way. My president, make Zugman president, my president said last night in America, Nisht over here, he said last night that there's only two choices in Iraq. It's either you win or you lose. There's no compromise. Nisht talking middle way over here. This, this milchome is either you win or the hoyel, I see, I don't want to say it out of my mouth. There's no two ways to go around. And the Rebbe made it clear, yes, Shnovi be Yisrael. The Rebbe made it clear that what he was talking about, he was not talking about his own, but this is rather a, exactly a shlichas that he has, and therefore we have to follow through it because we represent the Rebbe. And as you heard earlier, there's so much Nevi'is that have gone through. I mean, I don't want to miss some of this stuff because I think all this is pertinent. Well, you, you learn the Zoyav, and you look in the Reish Chochmah, you take a look at all these things where you see that 9-11 is mentioned, and, and Ben Laden is mentioned, and, and everything is mentioned, and as mentioned before, the Akriya Bagdusha in regard to the tsunami and all the rest of the floods that we're witnessing in our time. How many more Simonim does the Rebish have to show us before we get the hint what's coming off over here? We see it one after the other after the other. We don't have to go right to when, the, when all these other things and all the other warnings that the Rebbe warned us has come true, whether this was warnings about Shtochem, you take a look that everything the Rebbe warned us over the years have happened. I was talking over here before the so-called program began, and I mentioned to somebody about the letter that the Rebbe wrote to Sharon over 20-some-odd years ago, more than that. It was before the Yom Kippur War. And the Rebbe told him that his place is in Bitochen, his place is not in politics, and if he gets involved in politics, it will be a sakona for him, and it will be a sakona for Klal Yisrael. It's happening. And in regard to me, who Yehudi, a whole world looked around, and the Rebbe was screaming, and nobody took, took heed of what the Rebbe said. 
But today, the Misrad Apnim in Israel admits that 70% of the Olim from Russia were Poshut Goyim. And the Rebbe said there's going to become a fifth column in Atasol. There is a fifth column in Atasol. You walk around, you think that you have to go to New York to see graffiti on the, on the bus stations or on the train stations? You don't have to go to Atasol. You'll have enough graffiti with, with Slomim and with, with Nazi Simonim and, and the Alamaisel. You don't, you don't have to go far. And who's it coming from? Those people that the Rebbe warned that if you're not going to bring them in, it's to me who Yehudi is going to bring them. There's a famous story of Rab Zusha and his brother, which has also a shaykh to the tongue. They ended up in jail, obviously for spreading Yiddishkeit. They end up in jail, and Rabbi Lemelech wakes up in the morning, and he noticed, because of the prison, he noticed that Unlike today, where you have a bathroom, you'll pardon my French, uh, there was a bucket in the middle of the room, and uh, that's where you had to remove yourself. And he notices that, and he says to himself, how can you daven here? Can the daven? So he started crying. He's crying, he's crying. He can't have the can film, he can't daven, he's crying. Dinah Shachanov. Abzusha notices that he goes over to him, and he says, what are you crying about? <laughs> he tells him. So Abzusha says, I really don't understand you. If you would be able to daven today, would you talk it daven the way the Ebersh expects from you to daven? Obviously not. So at least now, the Shulchan Aruch tells you that you can't daven. So at least now you know you can't mess up. Ah, good thought. So they both started singing and dancing. <clears throat> the dancing that they started, the, the, the mochil that they made, became very infectious. So Bissalach, the Goyim started joining it. And Sigevon again said, The warden notices this. And he hears all the singing and dancing and he gets mad because in a prison you're not supposed to be happy. So he goes and he starts asking around, what's going on over here? So somebody tells him the story that there's a bucket of Yanamaisa right in the middle of the room. And Rabbi Reb Lemelech was crying and Rabbi Zusha told him and now they're besimcha. He got so mad, he said, take that bucket and take it out right now. <laughs> You pardon my French with these kind of a buckets. Instead of the chavek zetzim veinen, and instead of a vek zetzim we mentioned over here earlier that whether tshuva can be besimcha or not, kindalach today is Rosh Hashanah. Mach dem chesh nefesh with simcha, and make the chesh nefesh that we have to be joyous about this, and we were zoicha shreinu matoyv cholkeinu, that we were brought into this generation, and yes, maybe you want to call it a doyosim, you can call it whatever you want, ikvesedem shecha, you can give it all these nice titles, but the bottom line is, if you think for a minute, we are still greater than those guys that lived in the time of Moshe Rabbeinu. I still don't see everybody running around and questioning the Ebishter here and there, although we saw a lot worse things. Over there you saw Matan Teure, Meshreit, Gimmeressen, over there you saw whatever, so you end up in love with it. Not that I'm trying to knock them, but we are still a little bit greater. We can be proud of it with where we stand today. Judaism, Teure, Limedat Teure, was never at a peak as it is today. Lombezech, Nishnarezech, in the time of the Gemara and all those times, it wasn't as hot as it is today. Heint Ler, Memer, Vimit Gelerent Yamut. There's no question in my mind, because you take a look, you'll see yourself. Half of the davening is set up for those guys, the Amshu Besodas, the guys that couldn't read, they didn't know, Terem Fernomen, Et Kumen, Et Chayim, Chazos Hashat. These guys were a bunch of Amat, they may have been from Eden, but they weren't exactly learned people. Hein Zitun Amalaren to the Gan Tzavelt. We're better off than those guys. So let's say, Ashreinu Matei Cholkeinu, that we're here in today's generation. Let's say more than that, Ashreinu Matei Cholkeinu, that we are Chesidim of the Rebbe, and that we were Zoycha to hear it, and that we have the Schus to follow it. And let no one start tell you that I don't want to put my head in. I heard this today. I don't want to any machnis roishi b'shnei hogim. I hear two sides. There's zok, there's zok. Let me tell you a very simple about Benel. <coughs> the famous statement in the time of Koirach, I mean, after all, it's a good question. It's a good question. One guy is making the mess and you're going to kill out so many thousands of people? And the Babinal answers that the MS, the problem was as follows. Koivach, he says, wasn't a simple yukul. It's not some rebel that got up over here. It wasn't a Ben Laden. This guy was a big Talmud Chacham. 
This guy was a god of Israel. Wanted to get all them, as they say today. Wanted to get all them. So what happened over there? People started saying to each other, I'm not going to put myself in Moshe Rabbeinu as a big godel. And, uh, and Kairach is a big godel, so I'll sit by the sidelines. I'll watch what's going to happen. And whoever wins, that's the side. I'll jump on. That is why the punishment came. Because you can't sit by the sidelines and watch the show and then decide where you're going. If Moshe Rabbeinu is the Nasi Yisrael, then Moshe Rabbeinu is the person you're following. There's no two ways about it. And don't start giving me Maises, Derek, Gizok, Piyan, Azat, Amit, Chochem, and Azat, Goyse, Mashpi, and Azat, Chsid, Shehid. All these Baba Maises mean nothing to me. When you open up the Rebbe's Asicha and you see clear what the Rebbe says and what the Rebbe demands from us, and Divrei Horav, Divrei HaTalmid, Divrei Mi Shoymit. Simple question. <coughs> there was a person that was looking for, he was going to date, he was looking, he was standing in Shidduchim. So he was asking his friend who just got married, <coughs> he said, uh, give me some instructions. So his friend said like this, when you start dating, let her speak and you listen. When you get engaged, you speak and hopefully she'll listen. And when you get married, both of you will speak and the whole world will hear you. We've passed those stages already. There was a time that we listened to what other people said. There was a time that Rabbi told us that we have to tell other people what to do. And at this point in time, we've already reached the peak, the peak, the pinnacle of things that now we have to have the whole world listen to what we have to say. We have to make that Everything was made already. We can't run away anywhere, and we have to do clearly what the Rebbe told us, because that's the only way we are going to be matzliach. And I want to conclude with one interesting vote. <coughs> the Torah tells us, and we're going to be reading it shortly, that we should build the Mishkan. And in the Mishkan, the key ingredient was atzeshitim. What is atzeshitim? For those who know, those are actually Arzei Levonin. Arzei Levonin. And as the question goes, how did Arzei Levonin come to Egypt? And the famous story that Yankee Vavina took it down to Mitzrayim, told the children, and so on and so forth. But where did the name Shittim come from? Where did the name Shittim come from? If it's Arzei Levonin, where did the name Shittim come from? And it's Shtus, right? And the Rebbe talks in the first Maimer, Shtus Delamata, Shtus Delamata, Shtus Dikdush, Shtus Lomaza. Where does this all come from? What are we basing ourselves over here? What's the, what's the fundamental of this? What's the foundation of this statement? It says somewhere an interesting thing. That <clears throat> the question is be it begs to be asked. Pari was a very paranoid person. We all know that. When his big astrologer said that Noilid Mashiach shall Yisrael, Right away, he says, Just throw everybody, including the Egyptians. Because he was a paranoid person. If that's the case, did Pari not notice trees, Arzelevonen, growing in Goshen? Did he never come to ask anybody, what are these trees? And if people, if he asked people, I would have to assume that some people told him what was going on over here. And if they did tell him what was going on over here, and he was so paranoid, how come he didn't destroy these trees? Because he didn't want them to leave Mitzrayim. He was ready to do everything and anything they shouldn't leave. It says that that's precisely what happened. He asked, and he was told what the purpose of it was, and he decided he was going to destroy it. There were a few Mishigoyim who were so convinced in the Giyula Although this was right in the midst of the Avedas Perech that was going on, they were so convinced that they said over our dead bodies. You're not going to do this. They lay down in front like on Tenement Square, and they said, you want to run the tank over us, Gesundheit? You're not going to destroy it because we're going on a Mitzrayim shortly, and we're going to build a Mikdash, and we're going to use the Atzeh the Arzi That is where the name Shittim came from, from the couple of Mishugoyim that held ground and were not ready to give in and stand foot they were zeiche to be called atze shittim meloshe shtus shtus de kedusha shtus de lomaza. That you have to elevate it. The whole thing that we know what it says chsedus about this was zeiche to be because of a couple of mishigoyim. I invite each and every one of you to be part of those mishigoyim. Do what you have to do, and the rebbe will help that tonight.
As we all know, Halacha says, if a person says, I'll be a Nozir, Kishiyovi Mashiach, his Naziris, according to Halacha, starts tonight. Not tomorrow, and not when he starts hearing some bells somewhere or some shoifers blowing. It starts tonight. Tonight we will be Zeicher, that the Rebbe is going to come even in England and take us all out of this Golis. I don't think I can ask you to do anything more than that, but less than that, I beg you not to do. L'chaim.